fuck you doing? Remember that name, Good Pizza, with three Z's, baby, three Z's. What's up, fam? It's your boy, JP, Good Pizza. Yo, check this out. This week, we got a very special guest. The homie Loud TAC came through to share his story with us. Listen, this guy's been crushing in the garden for years. Wait till you guys hear this story, man. He's well-known around these parts, puts out fire tree all the time. Can't wait for you guys to see the episode, man. We'll see you on the show. Steve, thanks for coming through, my brother. Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, man. It's been a long time coming, man. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt, man. I'm excited to, to learn the story, learn about the man behind the brand, uh, a man whose uh, flower I've been smoking for some years now, man. I oh, appreciate that. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. And we'll, we'll get into all that. But before we do, let's take it back to the story behind the story. Uh, let's talk about what was it like for young Steve, young, loud THC growing up, man? Where, where are you from, bro? San Jose, Melpitas area, Bay Area. Okay. I guess you call that the South Bay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, that's where I was born and raised down there uh, till I was about 10. Then I moved up to the Sticks and up in, up in a town called Sonora. Okay. And uh, I've been up there ever since pretty much. But uh, nice, born and raised yeah. down in San Jose, Melpitas till I was about 10. Ended up having to move up there because I got myself in trouble with weed when I was like eight or nine years old. Yeah. 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 So, no doubt. You know, Mom no thought doubt. she was doing the right thing about trying to get me out of town, but uh, just put me deeper into the fucking game <laughs> deeper in the weeds yeah. brother no doubt yeah no but doubt. not coming up single mom you know just like all of us you know that yeah. story you know no pops around so yeah um but i i gotta give it to my moms you know she she raised us right and let us become men cool. made us understand you know that you ain't getting nothing for free you know yeah. work your asses off so it was it was it was a good upbringing i gotta give good. it to my mom's being a single mom raising two boys by herself you know okay props to her yeah, you know what? I can relate to that. My, I grew up single mom raising two boys. Yep, yep. Yeah, man. Yeah, so you know the life, you know? You, yeah, I do. It's it's what gave me my hustle, you know? My yeah. gra- my, my grandfather, <laughs> he came over from Lebanon on a boat. Okay. So that's my mom's dad. So uh, that hustle that he had to mm. be, you know, an immigrant coming into the United States was pushed onto me. So I've always had a hustle since I was a kid. Sure. You know, I was taught you're going to work for whatever you want. And he went from nothing to becoming a real estate mogul, you know, left cool. enough money for my moms and stuff to be able to do well and all that so nice got instilled in me at a young age so i was i was i was hustling selling packs of gum at school you know you go buy the box of oh, gum for shit. you know three bucks and whatever and you sell the yeah. packs for 25 cents at school and bust down I was, I was always hustling since the day since i was a kid so if i wanted anything in life that's what i had to do that's what i was taught you want stuff in life you're gonna work for it that's right that's right yo that's crazy bro i love i love hearing the the high school grade school middle school hustlers the candy hustlers where you were busting out little candy packs that's how you knew bro a lot of people like really good in sales or building business or hustling like we do that's a lot of them did that yeah yeah you know what i'm saying oh yeah yeah a lot of them did that yeah but that's how you know that's you're hungry you, you can tell there's only certain people that do that shit you that's know right what I mean? those are the real hustlers the people that Fuck, yeah. come from nothing and want something yeah you know when i was raising my kids i basically told them you know you you, you there's two kinds of people in life i mean there's definitely more than that but People that want stuff and people that don't give a shit. They'll be happy with a freaking milk carton with a, you know, a, a, a towel over it for their coffee table in the living room. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I didn't raise my kids to be like that. You know, you, you don't work for what you want. That's right. So That's I, made, right. I, I, made, I made hustlers. <clears throat> Tell you what, man. Uh, one of my mentors taught me back in the day. He said, you know what, man? You'll never stop a hungry person from eating. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Ever, bro. And if you don't believe me, go downtown to any city that you live in and look. Just, just, just people homeless person, bro. They in the trash with it. They fucking stealing. They doing what the fuck they gotta do. You'll never stop a hungry person from eating. I say, I say this like, when I look to hu- to recruit people on my team, man, I want people that are hungry. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You can't teach hunger. Yep. It's just you either hungry or you're not hungry. Yep. You know? That's how you can tell if they're gonna fit in on your team or not. Because if you got some of those, <clears throat> it's those ones that aren't hungry that isn't messing up the, the flow. You yeah. Know? We, somebody can talk a mean game, but if they don't really have that drive. Yeah. It's all lip service. All, exactly, lip yeah. service. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, man, <clears throat> for sure. sure. So, what was uh, what was high school like, bro? What was the high school so, experience like for you, bro? So, coming up was you know I was I was I was always in trouble. You know, mom and <laughs> mom in talking to the principals and shit because I was a little hoodlum, just always getting in trouble, never mm-hmm. listening. You know, stuff like that. Um, once I got to high school, my mom was trying to like get me right, so yeah. she put me in a Christian school. <clears throat> oh boy. How'd that I mean, go? it was all right from my freshman to sophomore year. I was at a Christian school and I ended up getting kicked out because I was 
messing around with the principal's daughter in the back of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, not like that. Like, oh, like, oh like, hello. Yeah, well, like messing around back then when she put her hand on my leg, you know, I put my hand on her leg. Hey, I don't judge, playboy. I'm just do saying it do. was just kind of silly because by the time it got back to the principal, we may as well have been getting down back there, yeah, you know yeah, what I yeah. mean? So uh, he came at me in a kind of sideways way, so yeah. we had some words, and I got kicked out, but hey. You know what? It was the best thing that happened to me because that's when I started my weed shit. No shit. Yeah, because once I got out of that school, <clears throat> it was like, I, I, I was, I was just, I don't know how to say, I was, I was just ready to go. Like I was, I was tired of being held back of being who I was gonna be. You know what yeah. I mean? So I was just, I was just ready to start being a man. Yeah. Um. You know, all all, all boys want to be a man before they are. You know. Yeah, um, that's a fact. Yeah. What so, is that about? <laughs> the coming of age, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, this is part for of sure. a man's a man's journey. Yeah. Um, okay. So you start. So you you dropped out. You dropped out in tenth grade. You got kicked out. Did you ever finish school? Oh yeah. Well, I just went to a different school. So they oh, put just me, went to, okay, yeah. They just you. put me in a different in in the other high school that was in town. So I went got over it. there for a while. Started hanging out with a bunch of my, my my buddies that I that I was going to elementary school with that I used to get in trouble with, and they were already like smoking and stuff. So. Um, I, I started to try to smoke a little bit when I was with them. Like, well, the very first time I got high, let's go back. Yeah, let's uh, yeah, don't skip past the, the, that story. The, the now. first time I got high, okay. So here's this story. So I had a next door neighbor, and he had an older brother, right? Yeah. And I remember he we we were over there hanging out at his house. We were doing whatever kids do at like eight or nine years old, yeah. just playing around. Uh -huh. He knocks on his brother's door. Door opens, and his brother's just on the bed making out with his girlfriend with weed smoke everywhere. Okay. And I'm just like, oh, this is dope. Look at this the guy. Life. This is the life. Like he's just got a girl. Got <laughs> he's doing his thing, smoking weed. I thought this was the coolest thing I ever seen. Yeah. You know. So, uh, that I like say like maybe about two weeks later, out playing out across the street in the playground and shit with all the guys and these kids are over there smoking a joint. So I walk over and kind of get in a circle, kind of fudge my way in there with the bigger boys and okay. grab me a couple pulls really quick nice. and didn't really get high. Yeah. You know, just kind of took a couple pulls, didn't know what the fuck I was doing trying to fit in. Yeah. And uh, I think that's kind of what started it. And then the next thing you know, I'd say about fucking another couple days later, I was trying to find some weed. Okay. I started How old looking. were you? Eight, nine. Damn. Nine years dude. old. Yeah. Whew. That's what was in our area. You know, we were just. Hey, no doubt. Right. So it's just, I was just trying to fit in with all these kids that were running around my area. So that's what I was doing. Yeah. Um, And, uh. It ended up being to where I found some weed, but it wasn't weed. These guys were playing one over on me. Oh, so they say, hey, well, shit. yeah, here, kid, we got you some weed. And I went and got some money, you know, went and tried to buy a little bit of weed from these guys, brought it back, showed my next door neighbor buddy. He went and told his mom. His Damn, mom went dude. and called my mom. Next thing you know, my mom's like, where's it at? I'm like, uh-oh. I'm yeah. like nine years old. My mom's asking me where the weed's at. Ooh. And so I ended up having to show her this joint. She calls the co She calls the cops. Damn, bro. She calls the cops. I'm nine, eight, nine, I think I was nine. Nine years old, and she calls the cops. Cops show up, trying to scare me, <clears throat> put me in cuffs, make me sit on the couch, Yeah. trying to scare this little nine-year-old boy, fucking, you gonna go to jail, all this stuff, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. so. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, but it, I mean, it was cool. It, it did. It scared me at that moment. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you you're know? nine, bro. Um, but, uh, so, long story short, my mom told me way later in my life that that wasn't even weed. The cop said it looked like it was some. Oh my god, some oregano, or some something? oregano or alfalfa or whatever the heck it wanted to be. Damn, been. bro. Yeah, yeah. So and they still broke your balls. I mean, they're oh, trying yeah. to well, scare they, you. That I didn't was the get, in, I didn't get in trouble. My mom wasn't gonna like let them. She just wanted them there to scare me. Okay. You know, she wasn't like trying to get her her son in trouble. Yeah. She just wanted to teach him a lesson. For sure. So, uh, so that was like that was my first introduction to trying to get some weed. Well, after that, that's when she moved us up out of out of the Bay Area and moved us up into the mountains thinking that she's going to get us away from all of that. And it did for a while because, I mean, I got away from all those people. I was nervous about the cops. You know, I was nervous about all of that stuff. So um, <clears throat> so that's uh, that's how I got up to the, up into the mountains. And then I'd say probably around, like I said, about ninth, 10th grade is when I started messing with weed again with my homies. Okay. But that was the first time I got ended up getting like high, high. Um, <clears throat> Try but, smoking oil. But in between that, I'll never forget this. In between that, my little brother, I'm hanging out in his room, and we're talking, and I go and move his chair, and something falls out the bottom of it. And I'm like, what's that? And I look down, and he got a little pipe that he made, like, out of a hardware store with all these little parts, yeah. all these little copper pipe yep. pieces put together and all of this I stuff. I know that one. 
And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me, you smoking? And he's like, yeah, but don't tell mom, don't tell mom. Yeah. You know, mom was always the, we couldn't tell mom. She was a single mom, she was always worrying about us, you know? Yeah, we're man. Always giving, we're, we put her through hell. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> so then that was like, that was like really where I opened my eyes again. I'm like, wait, my little brother's smoking? I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start smoking too. Okay, you know? damn, so, little bro got you back in. Yeah, he was really <laughs> the one who got me back in nice. once we were up there. But, um, but uh, yeah, that was that was that was good times back then. You know, you, I didn't have many worries, bro. I didn't. You, you don't you don't realize until you get older how easy it was to be a kid. Man, you know, like it was just the best time, bro. Right? You don't even know it when you're in the moment. But you want to be old so bad. You just want to get old quick, and there ain't no reason for that. You know, <laughs> you get old quick. Just it, it happens so fast anyway. Especially once you got kids. I know you know that. Yeah. So well, yeah. So then in high school. I was getting in trouble, got kicked out of that school, went to Sonora High School, was there for a while, did some sports, you know, started to be getting into gymnastics and things like that. Okay. Um, we had an off-campus uh, high school, so like at lunchtime, you can bail. Oh, you can nice. like go off campus and stuff, and there was a spot called the Red Deli, right? Okay. And it was just a spot where all the stoners went to go hang out. Okay. You know, it, it, back in my day, in my little town, there was a clique. There was, you were either a stoner or you were a jock redneck. Okay. Right? There was two like cliques. I mean, there was more, but those were the two main cliques, and we sure. all warred. We all didn't get along, you know, bump each other in the hallways and, yeah. you know, all this kind of stuff. Had a little, a little, like we were all going to fight one day, and like five, 50 people on one side of the street and 50 people on the other side of the street all yelling at each other, Ooh. all puffed up, you know. We never did anything. It was yeah, all yeah. lip service, you know, just yeah, kids yeah. trying to do their thing. But uh, they didn't like, and they didn't like those stoners back then. Yeah. You know, they just, they just didn't. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that was, that was... Uh, that was a, a, a cool place to grow up in that small little town like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also why I'm as small as I am in the game. In that little town, everybody wants to know what you're doing. Yeah. You know? It's 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 harder to move up there than it For is sure. in, a, in a bigger area like this, you know? You know, so um it's it's just it's just a little bit more difficult to make yeah. those moves. If you if you get a warehouse and you're in a little strip mall, the guy next door is coming over because he thinks you got an automotive shop just like him. He goes, Hey, what you doing? You know? Yeah, everybody's in each other's business. Yeah, so small it was, town shit. Yeah, that's why it's, that's why it's been a little bit harder for me to have more product on the markets. You know, yeah, um, just just being in those small towns made it a little more difficult. Yeah, um, but then once I started really smoking and stuff, though, I don't know how, but I was always the one that had a way to get into the people that had the best fucking weed. Yeah, like everybody was always looking for me because I knew everybody with the best weed. Nice. Like, I don't know how this happened, but like I'd say it was probably. I was still, it was my junior year in high school. So that would be 85. Okay. So eight in 85, um, I was I was lucky enough to meet this uh, Indian guy from the Indian reservation in our town. Nice. And the cops weren't allowed out there, right? So they always had the best weed. Nice, like, bro. Like the best weed. But back when I was young, <sighs> like there was either, you know, the stress, brick weed, whatever you want to call it, Mexican, whatever. And then we just had a green bud. Right, we okay. just called it Green Bud. Well, these guys always had the best Green Bud you could ever find, and I'll never forget this. You had to go over there. You had to bring your own baggie. You had definitely had to know the guy because you couldn't even go onto this Indian reservation sure. unless you knew somebody out there. So first, you get to get on there. Then you got to go over there. I go to this guy's house. I would go over there. Tell he say how much money you got. You tell him you open up your bag, and he would just drop nugs in there until he thought it was. Damn, no scale, whatever. nothing, just eyeballing shit. Eyeballing all day long. I'll and it was it was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I remember, and even back then, eights were still fifty bucks. Ain't that something? It, how, how come everything else in the world raises, but why can't? I mean, I guess it's a good thing because if it was, we would be out of price. We wouldn't even be able to buy it if yeah, we kept man. going up and kept going up and kept going up like we all, you know, like everything else, every other commodity in the world. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, I remember it's giving true. this guy a hundred bucks, and he gave me three buds that were like bigger than golf balls they were like this mm -hmm. they were huge right i was amazed i'm like oh my gosh this is the best weed i ever seen so i take it back to school we're kicking it out at lunchtime the next day i go behind the deli to show my buddy my bud and he showed me he's bud and we're showing each other and a campus cop come walking around the corner oh damn i'm like oh busted damn. he takes off running i just stood there because she knew who i was because I'm, I'm an outgoing guy people always knew who i was talking yeah. and always that kind of stuff so I just stopped. She goes, "What are you doing, Steve?" I mean, we ain't doing nothing. We were just we were just talking. 
She goes, I seen that. You got to give that to me. I'm like, oh, damn. Damn it, man. So I gave it to her. They called the cops, but the cops just took my weed, my pipe, and my lighter and bounced. I never got a ticket. I never got nothing. That was it. So basically. Can't be mad at that. I I was. I was. I mean, I was mad because I knew that cop was getting high on the best weed I ever got. Yep. Yep. But. uh, (laughs) That's a fact. Yeah. But. um, What's up, pizza fam? It's your boy, JP. Good pizza. Check this out. I'm getting a lot of questions on where I can find the fire good pizza. Check this out. We got you covered. We're in NorCal, SoCal, Central Valley, San Diego. We got you covered on the slices. Peep the list. Go check out the shop. Tell them good pizza sent you. Peace, love, good pizza. Yeah, so for the most part, uh, that's that's uh, okay. that's how high school went. You know, when I first started getting into that, then I was always able to be getting the best weed. So everybody was always after me for the fire. Yeah. I was lucky that way. You know, I don't know how I was lucky that way, but I was always lucky that way. I always smoked and had the best fucking tree. You were a man on a mission. I, I was. I didn't want to smoke boof. Yeah, yeah, same, bro. So, uh, <clears throat> so what happens after high school? Well, after high school, I mean, it was still the same shit. We were we were the ballers in town, you know, me and my homies. So we kind of ran that little town for a while as nice. far as like, you know, I mean, shoot, we did we did a little, little bit more weed, you know, but we were just, hey, we, were all, we were all having a good ass time when we were young, you know, yeah, in that man. town, there was nothing to do but party. So, yeah. um, <clears throat> so we were doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, after high school, I was just still slanging, you know, I got, uh, I got, I got my first wife when I was. 23 I think I think it was 22 23 um but that was just because I was out running around partying got her pregnant and ended up marrying her Ooh, gotcha. you know uh, I was seen that movie before yeah I, I didn't have a dad growing up my dad bounced so I said I wasn't doing that to my kids yeah no doubt so uh anyhow that's how that that one happened that. but uh after high school I was still slanging I mean shoot just like anybody else any other hustler was out there um you know, getting getting an ounce, slinging it to the homies, get yourself some free weed, go get another one. Ounce turned into a couple ounces. A couple ounces turns into a QP. Next thing you know, you're you're slinging. You know, and, and on and on this thing of ours goes. Yeah, <laughs> and, and nobody uh, can relate to that out there, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, it was really cool though because for some reason I always had access to the best stuff. Like <clears throat> the 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 one other there was two other people that I was able to get in with. One of them was a kind of a mentor for me. His name was Ron, Ronnie, and uh, that guy always had everything. Okay, like everything. He was our he was our man. Um, <clears throat> but uh, right. I was able to get in with these people that we called. Uh, they were called Mom Pa Dobbs. Okay, right, That's and cool. and uh, they had back in the day what we would have probably called eventually started calling blueberry. Oh no shit! It was these like the DJ little, short blueberry. These little round purple fire ass buds but yeah. back then we didn't have names for stuff no we didn't you know you certainly um, didn't. but what was cool about this place is they had a gumball <clears throat> machine that okay. was in there for the people like me who were able to come over the only i know how i got in with these people so my best homie bucky he um he was dating the daughter okay. and we were and we were good friends and i just happened to show up with them one day and they're like hey who's this you bring into the house they're like this is steve i've been telling you about him they're like okay okay so, I mean, that's just how I kind of got in the door, but you yeah. didn't get to go to these people's house. Like, yeah. you either had to know Buck or you had to know their three kids. Like, they didn't just let people come sure. over. Sure. Those were the people that did stuff. But uh, when you came in, they had this little gumball machine, and I'd go there with a pocket full of quarters, me and Buck, because they'd have those things wrapped up in aluminum foil in this gumball machine, and we'd be there trying to get these purple buds out of there. Go out there chewing a big old wad of gum because we only got, like, one bud, but we'd go over there with, like, five bucks a quarters, dumping through what? this machine trying to get ourselves a couple of fucking joints so it was gumballs mixed with yes nugs yes wrapped in aluminum Fuck. foil it was the coolest little gimmick that is I, cool. I, it was so dope that is cool yeah you know we're, we're, we're just these young kids you know going over there i mean like i said we were just fresh we were still That's in cool. high school but she did it until until all the way we were out it was dope bro i loved yeah. going there i loved going there taking <clears> my quarters on my just spare quarter? change it was just a quarter. Nice. Yeah, they weren't even trying to make anything. They were just. They were, was it was cool. something fun for us to do. It was more of a gimmick, yeah. you know. Yeah. It was. It was. It That's was. Dope, it was marketing bro. before marketing was a right. thing for weed type right, shit, you man. know. Um, That's tight. Yeah, yeah. I but I mean, it was that. just. It was just stuff like that, you know. I was just always lucky to be in the right places and know the right people and yeah. and 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 that kind of stuff. So I was always been able to always been slinging, even after high school. Um, 
And then I got, you know, of course, then I got, uh, I got married and uh, had a couple of kids. And I started doing the work thing, you know, okay. just like all of us. And um, first, you know, I was just doing construction, okay. just like anybody else, doing a little bit of that, the, you know, restaurant work, just regular, no, no graduation high school type work, you know. Yeah. Um, and then I uh, was dating this girl and her, uh, her dad was an electrician. Okay. And he's like, oh, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do when you grow? <laughs> I'm like, well, I haven't really thought that far Sounds yet. Sounds like me. He's like, well, one. you're going to show up at the job site on Friday. I'm like, uh, all right, I'll show up. And I cool. showed up, and this man basically took me under his arm, said, all right, kid, here's how it's done. And he wow. showed me how to be an electrician from that day on. And oh, I, shit, man. Yeah, and I'm, I'm thankful to that man to this day. Like, I, I was able to raise my entire family wow, and, 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 and do what I do. And, and it's actually what also opened other doors for me later on was being an electrician <laughs> who smoked. I know them doors. Yeah, right? <laughs> People are like, whoa, you were sparky? <laughs> Yeah, I'm hey like, yo. yeah, yeah. So they said, let's let's come, let come on, <laughs> come on now. Yeah, I got a room that needs to be up. So, um, but yeah, so that's that's where I got my electrical experience. Um, or I got a, or I got a bill that needs to go away. Just kidding. Yeah, we know right. he didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know, it's I didn't. I, I loved being a dad. I, I it was probably the my my biggest accomplishments were my kids. Yeah. You know, Definitely. I've done a lot of things in my life, a lot of things that I'm proud of, but the proudest things I am are my kids. Um, Definitely, bro. That's, uh, you know, it, it made a man out of a boy real quick. It's a beautiful accolade, man. Yep. Yep. I was a boy until I had kids. Then it made me become a man. Yeah. At least, so, at least what my definition of a man is, you know, a man that, that, that cares and ready to take care of life, you know? Yeah, man. Um, there for your family, bro. Yeah. 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 So. Um, that's what, that's, that's, that's what, that's where I was right there. Um, went, went, was only with that lady for probably like three years. Okay. Um, had the, had a fallen out, whatever the reason may be. And, uh, it happens, bro. Oh yeah. Well then I, then I met the lady that I'm with now and, Ooh, uh, Miss, strange. Miss Loud THC. That's the one. Like we, we've, I married her because I love her. No I didn't doubt. marry her because she was pregnant or anything like that. Because yeah. yeah, I married this one because she was she's a good woman. Um, I probably I would not be where I am right now if it wasn't for her. Uh, she's definitely my rock. Um, nice, bro. Yeah, uh, I, we we we've been married for twenty seven years now. I think. Wow, God bless, bro. Twenty seven. It might be twenty eight. I'm gonna get myself in trouble. But uh, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty fucking good. I think she'll let you slide, bro. Yeah. You, <laughs> you're past twenty, bud. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, uh, but um, so, you know, coming up, I was an electrician, child support left me with damn near no money. So the struggle of life, you know, for anybody is making it for your family. So I just yeah. found a way to do that. You know, like even with my child support taken out, I mean, that I never complained about paying my child support, but the amount of money that they left me was unreal. Yeah. Like I was left one hundred and fifty dollars a week on my paycheck. And, and I wanted my kids to be taken care of. I was all about paying that child support. Sure. But uh, when they kept trying to take me back to court to get more money, that's when I had to step up and tell the judge, I says, look, I just got to say it like this. I, I'm all for taking care of my kids. I said, but I didn't leave this woman so that she can get more money from me every time I get a better job and better myself. Yeah, dude. So um, you guys keep bringing me back to court. I'm just going to start working for cash. I'm going to cut wood. I'm gonna do all kinds of stuff up here. I'll mow lawns, I'll do whatever. I said, you guys won't get a damn penny. Right. And he's like, well, no, no, that's not what we want. I well, says, okay, well, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is the last time I wanna, I wanna be in here. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Good for you, man. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's um, the, the, my wife is a, definitely a big part of Loud THC Organics and why we're able to do what we're able to do. Um, she, uh, stepped up big you know became a mom to my to those two kids that weren't even hers yeah they, they call her mom you know like she earned it yeah she did earn that that's cool man very respectable did you start growing weed at this time or are you just... so i started growing weed so shoot i've been growing weed for a long time like okay. i grew weed even i grew weed before it was cool to grow weed you yeah, know yeah, like yeah. I, I grew weed in my mom's house in the attic of one of the houses that we lived in when I was still in high school. Oh damn! Like you missed that part, bud. Yeah, I did. I, I skipped kind of right past that. <laughs> yeah, we we we, we, Shit, had, we had moved to this one house, 
And off of my bedroom, there was this, I was upstairs on the second floor, yeah. and in the closet there was this little door. And I opened it up one day, yeah. and it was a attic access to above another section of the house that was super tall. I had no idea it was like no big shit. up in there. So I opened that up and I looked and I'm like, I can put plants in here. I mean, you get in trouble for growing back when that built in those days. You know what I mean? They, they find one plant, you're going yeah. to jail. They find yeah. anything, you're going to jail. So um, I uh, put like, I got like a couple of plants from a buddy because he had popped some seeds. I don't even know what they were. He just had some plants and he goes, I got some plants for you. Here you go. We put like six plants up in my mom's attic, letting them, letting them do their thing. And uh, my brother was like trying to come over. He knew I was up there at nighttime trying to come over, see what was up. Mom heard us up there because it was uh -oh. right above her bedroom. Oh, chill, bro. Right. So you bound to get hit. Right. So she comes up. She's all, what are you boys doing? We come crawling out of there. She's like, what the fuck is under there? Nothing. Nothing, mom. It's nothing. What's that cord going in there? Oops. So she opens it. She's like, oh, that's it. She was getting ready to rip them out the ground. And I'm like, oh, please don't do it. Don't. Don't, don't let do me, that. Let me, let me call somebody. I mean, they were like just flowering. Ugh. They had just started to like just do their thing. Yeah, let's finish these out, mom. Chill yeah, out. I, I had no idea of how to really grow. I was winging it by far. I mean, shoot, yeah. I was like, I was 20 years old. I was out of high school. I didn't grow my first plant until I was like in my 20s, 21. Okay. Um, but it was in my mom's attic, you know. Um, and then... Uh, and so she was going to pull them out. She, she grabs a hold of them. She's like, all right, but they need to be out of here tonight. So I called my buddy. He come over in his truck, grabbed them. He got a camper shell, took them out of there. And that was that. You know, mom's, mom just kind of let it go. Yeah. Didn't get too mad. That's cool. Just kind of let it go. Um, she ain't called the boys on you this time. No, bro. no, not this time. Yeah, that's no. in her crib, bro. Yeah, yeah, but she, yeah, but she knew. I mean, I was older now. You know, no she doubt. knew. She knew I was partying. She knew I was smoking and having yeah. a good ass time and doing yeah. my thing now. But I mean, I was I was also taking care of. I had a job, and I wasn't I wasn't a fuck up either. Okay. You know? um, always been working. Always been working my entire life. Like I bought my first car when I was fifteen and a half. Um, Damn, that's impressive, bro. Yeah, I was working when I was fourteen, like a job job. You weren't even supposed to be working, but I knew people yeah. that owned companies. You know, I just go wash dishes or whatever, or do whatever just to make some money under the table yeah. because I was always hustling. I wanted things in life. You know, this guy, you got a guy for everything, man. Yeah. <laughs> I've been noticing that's a, a fucking trend throughout your story. Yeah, yeah. So I love it. I can pack with that. Um, yeah. Oh, no, no. Use this, bro. Use this. Oh. Yeah. Sh shout out to Alien Labs. There's something about your fucking, not only is your product awesome, your fucking, your batteries are fucking phenomenal for stuff and joints. Right. So um, I might be a little too fat. Yeah. I just, I didn't roll a huge one. Um, um, so, okay. So, you, you had your first crop when you were 20, right? Then um, now uh, you're older. When does the growing continue? Like, let's, let's well, talk shoot. about how, the, how, that, how the, that path unfolded. So then the first house that my, we were only boyfriend and girlfriend back then, that, but my wife and I ended up getting, um, had 10-foot ceilings in it, right? And I was getting this just shitty-ass weed. I want to say I was 23, 24, yeah. already separated from my wife, my ex-wife, okay. with this girl weekend dad kids are only in there every other weekend type things um and i had 10 foot ceilings and so my buddy's like hey i got a i got a thousand watt light i said i want it bring it so he gave me this light and i built a little one light square in a corner of my my master bedroom right just built it all the way to the ceiling hung a light in there put a little fan completely like oaky right like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. still didn't really know what i was doing but yeah. kind of had some basic ideas of sure. what should be happening so uh, go through and I do that. And we have a successful little grow. You know, I got like three plants in there, pulled it off. Pretty good bud. Nice, that was better dude. than definitely what I was buying at sure, the time. Sure, sure. So, um, so then, you know, uh, that I, I really was like had the bug for growing at that point. Like I'm like, okay, this is dope. I really like this. I'm going to keep doing this. So yeah. I kept that little room going like a little bit, you know, but it was never anything for any kind of money. It was just for some head smoke. Yeah, yeah. Um, then I, then then uh, that that guy Ron I was telling you about he was my he was the man dude he in town he was the guy who grew all the outdoor weed like uh, and we would trespass to do our growing back then you know what I mean none of us had property to be growing on we would do what we call gorilla growing right you you know what that term means gorilla growing yeah. but we just walk out onto somebody's yeah. property so the way we used to do it is we find property with a creek and with blackberry bushes. Right? Okay. So we go out there, we find the blackberry bushes, and we'll cut a tunnel through the blackberries where you got to get on your hands and knees and crawl through the blackberries. Okay. And we'll make little tunnels that go off to the side that go nowhere. 
And then all of a sudden you go Damn. through. Damn. Oh yeah, we don't want people fucking just yeah, crawling yeah, right yeah. to it, you know? So we made all these little tunnels that just go off to nowhere. And then by the time you get out in the middle of this big blackberry patch and you stand up, you, you don't even know you're there to be honest. Because like when I took my homies out there, we're gonna, me and Ron and a couple of other buddies went out there to go and harvest this shit. We go crawling through all these tunnels and all of these paths and we go and we stand up. And I go, we're here. And the guy goes, I don't see no bud. I'm like, exactly. I said, look around. And everywhere you look, what we did is we had a trail that went through the blackberries and we hollowed out underneath the blackberries and we planted our fucking plants under there and the buds came up through the blackberries. So all you seen was, if you flew over the top of that, it looks like a blackberry patch. Damn. Bro. You couldn't tell. And there was just, but when you look, there's these big ass colas just sticking up everywhere out of and the And the light got to them good enough to where they put, they, um, oh, bro, it banged. Fully mature. Oh, it day? banged. Like, wow. It smacked. And we had guys living out there, you know, so there's a guys that stay out there in a tent. Yeah. We'd have to bring them food every once, you know, once a week yeah, yeah. and all kinds Feed of the crew. Su supplies and all that kind of stuff. Um, harvest was the tricky part, though, bro. Harvest bro, was the tricky part. So yeah, we're, through the fucking, through the, through the patch. <laughs> we're, we're on someone else's property. And Jeez. not supposed to be there. And this story was kind of crazy. So when we took that room, when we took that harvest down, we had to, we took white sheets and laid them out on the ground, right? And just started okay. hacking plants and throwing them in these okay, white got sheets. You, got you. And we'd wrap them up like a big fucking joint yep. and throw them over our shoulder yep. and just walk out. And our girls were, this is before cell phones. So we yeah. were on a time crunch, you know, we don't have a way to, call our girl from out there in the middle of nowhere and be like, hey, come get us, you know? So we are on a, like a time thing. We got to get it done by a certain amount of time because our girls are coming back in X amount of time to pick us up on the Damn. side of the road, right? So here we are hiding in the bushes on the side of the road, waiting for our girls with big white sheets in the fucking bushes, waiting for them to drive by to throw all this Shame. shit in the back of the trucks, right? So during all this, we got the white sheets out and we dress in camos. We're fully yeah. camoed out, right? <laughs> um, and right in the middle of it, we hear helicopter. Ooh. That's the sound that you do not want to hear when you're harvesting. No way, bro. Actually, when you're doing an outdoor grow at all back then in the day. So um, I just grabbed, we were just kind of starting, maybe had three or four plants down. I grabbed all the sheets. I threw them into a fucking pile, threw open my jacket and laid on them, like just flat ass laid on them Yeah. with all my camos as a helicopter goes right over yeah. the top of me. I'm shaking. Yeah, because they could see the white sheets, bro. Oh, but they were gone. I, I, I hit them oh, under all my shit. camos. And then all of a sudden, all the guys come running out. They're like, yeah, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I kind of like helped us get through that one big they time did. from the cops. Took because, a grenade for the hose. Bro, I thought we were done. I thought we were taking it Damn, that day. bro. So, so, uh, so we, the, we get through it. We harvest it all. Throw it in these sheets out there, waiting by the road. Throw it in the back of these trucks, and we're driving through downtown because we got to go out to a, a little town that's like past where uh, downtown Sonora. And we're driving right through downtown in my pickup truck, bro. And I see a bud flopping out the back on a branch like this, oh, just fucking shit. flopping. And we're going on the back street, and one of our homies is like, "Hey, where are you going? Like, stop." I want to go. He just sees a bud flopping yeah, out yeah. the back of the truck. Just you know? calling him. Come yeah. on, homie. The, we're in. calling the cops, though, too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we yeah. Were just we didn't stop. We just straight. Yeah, yeah chill, bro. We'll talk later. Right? And then, but we pulled it off. Um, but those were the kind of harvest we yeah. used to have to have back in the day, bro, because we were doing gorilla grows. We weren't even on property Damn. that we should be on, you know? So then, me and a homie. What's up, guys? Just want to take a quick second to shout out my sponsors over at Grove Bags. Listen, Grove Bags are hands down the best way to store your cannabis. Forget jars, forget mylars. Nobody does it like Grove Bags. Listen, it's a six layer, non static bag. State of the art technology. It's going to keep your weed fresher for longer. It keeps your cannabis between 58 and 62% humidity at all times, the optimal humidity to store cannabis. It's gonna increase your shelf life, help prevent mold, weight reduction. Hands down, it's the best product out there. We don't use anything but Grove Bags of Good Pizza. And especially if your product is in stores, we all know there's some shelf life issues at the stores. This is gonna keep your product lasting longer on those shelves. So when your customer goes to try it, it's gonna be fresh cannabis. Listen, if you wanna store your cannabis the proper way, use Grove Bags. Use promo code pizza with three Z's. That's P-I-Z-Z-Z-A. Tell them good pizza sent you. We try to do the same thing. We go find our own blackberry patch. And the way we find a spot, at least me and my guy, 
is we go where we find, uh, you know what a PG&E ditch is? I don't. Okay, so here in California, PG&E makes water, like a water flume, uh -huh. like a little creek basically, and they use it for uh, power. They'll put it through like a little power plant. They'll, really? run, they'll run a bunch of water through it and they'll hit it to a power plant and they'll, they'll, they'll make water, uh, hydro water. And um, they throw trout in these things. So they let trout be in there. So you How know, come they throw trout in there? It's for people who want to go fishing. Oh, okay, like a hatchery type shit? Yeah, the hatchery okay. comes, dumps some trout in there so that we can all go up there, catch some fish. And I mean, it's a, it's a multi-use ditch. We'll okay, say. so is that, yeah, okay, got yeah, it. Yes, that it's makes a PG&E ditch, but it's a multi-use ditch. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know? So what we did is we found one of these PG&E ditches and we walked along that so that with, you know, on somebody else's property. So it looks like somebody or an animal or whatever is walking along the water ditch, right? So we were out there, did our thing, me and my, my buddy Harley, hollowed out our blackberry patch and did all of our little things we do. And I'd say we were probably just, I don't know, it wasn't flowering yet. We were just starting to get into flower. We're at a party, we're all partying that night. We didn't tell nobody. Like our old ladies drop us off out there. It was only him and I, his old lady or my old lady would drop us off. No cars ever parked out there. Um, we're at a party and this, this, this buddy of ours goes, hey, how come you guys didn't tell me you're growing? I want in. We look at each other. We ain't growing. What are you talking about, fool? He's like, nah, I heard you guys are growing. I don't know what you're talking about. You're, you're mistaken. We ain't growing nothing. Because back then, you didn't want to tell nobody yeah, 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 no nothing. Doubt. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like it is today. I mean, I, this is the first time I've even showed my face. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm from that era where you just don't talk. Yeah, dude. You know, it was. For sure. So, uh. We were both like mad at each other. So he took off and we're like arguing and stuff. And long story short, we found out that still my, my, she was at my ex at that time, but she wasn't when we started that. It's when we went through our separation. Well, she told her sister that we were growing and her sister moved her mouth. And they told this person that just like the way it starts, next thing you know, everybody knows about it. Yep. So we went out there and hacked it all <clears throat> down when it was immature. Damn. We didn't even get to finish it, you know? So. Damn it, man. Yeah, it's just, it's, it. Growing weeds tough, and getting away with it's tough back then. You know, you kind of just repainted the picture on growing weed before it was cool, and it was like it was so uncool and dangerous that you wouldn't even tell your man's. Like, no, it's kind of cool now. Like, yeah, I got a little, you know, I got a little <laughs> yeah. eight. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of a flex. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got my spot. You know what I'm saying? Back then, it was like, fuck no, I don't grow. Yeah. How did you get this information? Yeah, that's that's exactly how we were. We're like, wait, how 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 did that happen? So, um, so that was like, that was, that was, that was my like younger days of growing. Then once I was with my girl, we did that one lighter and then we ended up moving. And when we moved, I moved up to this place where I had, so, had a little bit of property, you know, had an acre, Nice. but there was like, it was a vacation area. Nobody was around and shit. So I put like five or six plants on my deck and, uh, it was, it was, Right at that time, I want to say it was 2003, maybe, 2003. And uh, what everybody calls granddaddy perps now, or Urkel or whatever, it was just called the perps back then. Okay. And it was from um, somebody up in up in Humboldt area, up north. Okay. And uh, Mendo perps? Yeah. And this guy, gave, when he gave me the cut, he's like, look, bro, just like it is nowadays when you get a cut. Of course, yeah. don't give it to anybody don't and don't tell anybody. no one. Yeah. Like, I couldn't tell no one that I even had this thing. Yeah. He's all, these people will come <clears throat> and get me. And I'm like, all right, that's all good. I wasn't on Instagram. There was no Instagram yeah, at that yeah, time. Yeah, or, I mean, if there was, I wasn't on it. My Instagram yeah. days didn't start to like 2009 and shit. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, we grew those. And then, then I was really into growing at that point. Like, okay, we regrew these plants out. It was the best fucking weed that I'd ever grown. And I'd ever smoked. And I thought, I did this? I can do that? Okay, let's really get into this now. Okay. So um, so I, I had a basement, right? And so I just said, fuck it, I'm going to blow this thing up. So I put a, started again, one light mm -hmm. in a corner. But it was weird the way I grew it the first time because this guy from Humboldt told me the way they did it is they took their plants and they built a bed and they left the middle open, like, no soil or anything in it and they bent the plants over with hangers like they just take hangers and they kept cutting them in half and just bending these plants over and train them to just lay down shoot bro my plants were never any taller than this the entire time in that run when i first started growing indoors we just took all this time pinning plants down for some reason then once we filled the whole area then we triggered a plant we triggered the room to like flower and then you just get this sea of green 
right? That's where I first learned how to, he was kind of teaching me how to do that from up there in Humboldt. That's how they were growing where yeah. he came from. Um, that was like my first introduction to a, a larger type wasn't large. I mean, it was still one light, but how they were doing it up there. Because yeah. I was just always doing it the way I thought it was should be done, or looking in a High Times magazine, or reading this, or you know. I mean, there was no no shit like there is nowadays. Yeah. You know, where you can just get on the internet and get an answer for damn near anything. My mom goes weed like that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Pins them down. Yeah. It, it's 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 not a bad thing. Um, no, if you get the right space for it, and you know what I mean, it, it, it's, it's a small garden. She had a small garden. So it wasn't yeah. like she had a field of shit. Yeah, well, I mean, when you got short ceilings, it's almost the thing you have to do, and that's yeah. what that's what that basement was. Is was a yeah. very very short ceiling. So uh, oh, this is indoor. Yeah, this indoor. indoor you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Indoor. So then it went from the one light, and and so went from the one light, and uh, took some of the weed, smoked it with the homies, you know, did some of that kind of stuff. They're like, "Wow, this is great, bro." I'm like, "They're like, can I get some?" I'm like, well, "I don't have enough." I mean, let me see what I can do, you know? So I made it two lights. Right? Then I made it three lights. Next thing you know, I got three lights going, and I and and I go to my first High Times Cannabis Cup. And I want to say this is probably 2008, okay. nine, maybe no, maybe 2010. I'm not exactly sure the year. No doubt. But it was my first High Times Cannabis Cup, and I went and... Uh, Started kind of handing out some of my buds to people, kind of like we did back then in those days, sure. you know. Started handing out some buds. People like, God, damn, this is fire, bro. This is fire. Where'd you get this? I said, Oh, that's me. They're like, Man, what's your, what's your brand? What's your name? I don't have one. They're like, Hmm, this is fire. You need to do something about that. So I was like, Okay, it was my first okay. cannabis, my very first cannabis cup, you know. So I'm yeah, like, Okay, that, this is kind of cool. Give I said, you some fucking confidence. I want to be on that side of the table, though. Yeah. I don't want to be over here. I want to be on that side of the yeah. table. So I go the next time. And I'm walking around, and I see the BioBiz place, the BioBiz booth, okay. a nutrient company. And I go up, and I talk to these guys, and they're like, "Oh, oh, you're that guy that's that that we heard about that has our, our, our you use our nutrients, don't you?" And I go, "Yeah." They go, "We need to come up with a name for you." And I'm oh, like, shit. "Yeah." I'm like, "They're like, we want you to come in a booth with us. We want you to come to the show and and be in our booth." And like, I say, "Can I sell weed?" They're like, "Yeah." I'm like, okay, sign me up. Where's the show? They said, anywhere yeah. you want to go, bro, we got you. Just, you know, so that was kind of like my introduction into, into being able to, like, be on that side of the table. And that's where Loud THC started, kind of. So no basically shit. what yeah. happened was, was... You came up with the name then? I did. We, we, my wife and I were sitting at home one night, and it was pretty much me, but I was running them by her. Mm -hmm. And I basically, everybody always told me my weed was loud. Okay. Like, everybody's like, bro, your weed is so loud. Man, it's always so loud, and it gets me so high. It gets me, like, higher than anybody else's weed. And I'm like, oh, come on. you just, you just stroking me. And they're like, no, I'm not kidding. It's like, yeah. so I told myself, hmm. So I thought, well, I got to have loud in the name. There you go. And I'm like, and what gets you high? THC, loud THC. And I grow organically, so I thought loud THC organics. You know, it was, Bam. boom, it just kind of happened like that. And it, and it stuck. I told people and had a logo made. And when they saw the logo, people were like, that's tight. That that all works, and it was right when branding just started. Like, yeah, you know, like when people were just starting to make a brand, and I got lucky to be at the right place at the right time. I feel like, you know, like I was just at the right place, um, doing the right thing at the right time, um, and because of that little bit of traction, this is where the Sherb story comes in. So, uh, I was about to ask, when is the <laughs> Sherb coming? Because yo, let me stop you for just one quick second. Yeah, yeah, not to cut you, but that's how I know you, bro. Ah. I know you from Sherbert. And my bro Nick, Exotics916, he fucking loves Sherbert. I love, love Sherbert. And this is like, this is when like I met him. He's on the ankle. He's at his old spot. You know what I'm saying? I uh, met him. He was a super hot boy on the ankle, super trapping. Like, I was like, I fucking like this guy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And fucking, he had a batch of your, um, this is the first time I seen your weed. It was Sunset Sherbert uh, by Loud THC. I'm like, He's like, yo, I love Sherb, but yo, this shit is like some different Sherb. I'm like, all right, well, fuck yeah, give me a QP. Let me throw it on the fucking delivery menu. And uh, I hit him like, yo, bro, this shit is fucking fire, bro. Because this is already like gelato's out. Like Sherb's yeah. like the little homie now. Everybody, oh, you got Sherb, that's cool. Like, but this is kind of like gelato's making such a big noise. It was kind of cool to see Sherb and a, and a dope batch of Sherb again. You know what uh, I'm saying? Yeah, because nobody's really fucking with it. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, so that's how I found you, man. Got you. Continue. Yeah. Well, I had, so I ended up getting lucky. I was walking through the show and I saw this guy, Yoda Gross. Okay. And I had 
already I had just started to get on Instagram and I started it's like somebody said are you on Instagram and I'm like nah so I saw what Instagram mm-hmm. was about and so I, I got on there and I started to see all these people had brands and stuff and so I started following a few people and I saw this Yoda Grows so okay. I seen him at the show and I hit him up and he's like yeah bro I heard about you got some good weed so he's like we need to we need to get together and hang out and I'm like yeah let's do that so I go to this guy's spot we're sitting there smoking and I didn't know he was in with the Cookie guys. He was in with Cookie's family. Oh, sick. Um, I didn't know anything about Sherp. I, I knew nothing about that. Like no Sherp. shit. No, I didn't even really know of it as a strain at that time when I okay. got it. Um, and he's all, he's, he was messing with these clones. He's like, yeah, I just got this cut. I got a whole tray of them. He goes, this is dope. He goes, you want one? I go, sure. I go, what is it? He goes, it's Sunset Sherp. I go, yeah, I'll take a cut of that. No problem. He yeah. goes, but bro, he gives me the whole. You gotta, you, yeah. you, you gotta. Keep it cool, man. Keep <laughs> it cool. Keep it cool, because they're gonna be watching you. And I'm like, all right, all right. So, got the sherb. I grew it out, and I took it to. I think it was Chalice was the first place I went to it with. Okay. It was either Chalice or another High Times Cup, and I know it was in L.A. And I go to the show. I go to a couple of booths, and I'm showing them the fucking weed, and people are tripping out. No bro. shit. They're like, what the, what the fuck is this? Almost like you say when on one of your podcasts, I heard you like you like it when people go, "What the fuck yeah, is yeah, that?" That's how like, you know. That's how like, you know. So that's what happened. Like they're 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 just smelling the jar and they're looking at it and they're like, "What is this?" And I tell them, "Sure, but like that's not like any sherb I've ever seen, like any sherb I've ever smelled or anything." Yeah. Like what what's up? And I says, "Well, I got it from the homie, and this is what's up." So. It's kind of what gave me my traction in the game, you know, was, was having that cut. It was before you were supposed, anybody really had it. Like, he wasn't even really supposed to have it. Sure. Um, he actually got in a little bit of shit, I think, for passing it to no me, shit. to be honest. Because, yeah, I mean, it, it started a it little like bit. like that of, back then, bro. Yeah, it started a little bit of a riff. I won't lie. There was there was definitely a, a, a couple of issues that came up because I had the cut and a few things happened, but I'm also not on here to talk shit about anybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring up any names or say anything like that because that's not what I'm I'm not that guy, let things go. Um, but let's just say that that cut caused a lot of drama and a lot of things and <laughs> but it also did oh, a lot. Weed it, wars. Yeah. It also did a lot for me too. So yeah. I'm I'm very, very thankful. And now it's water on the bridge. Nobody gives a fuck. Exactly. It's fucking sure, bro. It's it, been it's been ten years. Everybody's good. Exactly. There's been plenty of beef since then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's exactly true. That's funny, bro. So, but that's how I got the sherb, and that's how it made traction. So then I'm I'm at like another show, and this guy, uh, OG with the fire is what I think his name is yeah, now. Yeah. He comes up to me and he's like, know. he's like, hey, bro. He goes, Sherbinsky heard about your sherb. He wants to see it. Nice. I'm like, all right, I'll go show it to him. I, I ain't got, I don't care. So I go over to his booth and he's like, who are you? I'm like, I'm Steve, loud THC. I told you wanted to see my work. He's like, oh, you the one with that sherb? Oh, I'm like, yeah. So I hand him the jar. He opens it up, smells it, and just looks at me for like two minutes, bro. It seemed like a fucking hour. Damn, but bro. he's just looking at me with no expression on his face, oh, no man. nothing, just like smells it again, reaches his hand in there, grabs out a handful. He goes, damn. Damn. That's all he said. From the man himself. He goes, hey, turns around. Yells at a couple of his boys, fingers him up there, they yeah, come up there, yeah. shows it to him. He like, oh, whoa. And I'm like, oh, that's a compliment. I appreciate that. They go, and the one kid goes, you know this is a bag seed, right? <laughs> oh, bro, I don't oh, care what the go. fuck it okay, is. Okay, bro. I said, I don't care what you want to say it is. I was just told you guys wanted to see my work. So I just brought yeah. us over here for you guys to see what's going Stop on. Stop breaking my balls, all right? And so Sherb is like, oh, can I have a little bit? I'm like, absolutely. So I took him out, you know, nice joint. I'd give Sherb the Sherb, you know right? what I mean? Gave him, a, gave him a nice <laughs> joint. Well, I had taken out of my backpack another jar that I happened to have, and I put that on his table really quick, and he goes, what's that? And I go, well, that's that's Dippin' Dots. He goes, what's Dippin' Dots? I said, Dippin' Dots is something that, uh, remember the guys from Orange Tree that made the Orange Tree? Yep, I do. He made do. the Dippin' Dots. Where, I don't remember his name. But it was like I know, homie. I yeah. know. Uh, Green Line. Yeah, Green Line. Green Line. Green yeah. Line. That was the guy. Um, he passed me that cut when we were doing some work one time, and uh, it's it's dosy dose time. Sunset sherb. Oh, say word. No shit. Yeah, and that was be- people weren't that, crossing man. sherb at that time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was still bro. hella new. So when I told wow. him I had dosy time sherb, he looked at me again for like three minutes. Like what? 
with no expression, yeah. no nothing, yeah, just yeah. these blank eyes. And I'm just like, damn. Who is this fucking guy? Yeah, right? So I'm like, <laughs> so he opens it up and he smells it. And he goes, so I did the same thing. He goes, damn. <laughs> he goes, you got a green thumb, son. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. I said, I just try to fucking grow what I want to smoke. You know, I'm, yeah. uh, I just... I just grow what I want to smoke. So Good, love it. he's like, oh, well, I need a little bit of that, too. Yeah, we'll need some of that, player. But this time, he grabbed it. Yeah, yeah. He stuck his hand in the jar and pulled out, like, I said, wait, 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 wait. That's a personal jar, homie. This is the, That's all there is. There is no more. Yeah. He's like, that's okay. You're going to grow some more, right? Yeah, Damn, I'll grow some sir, more. big dog. Dude. So he just grabbed, a, <laughs> like, a half-ounce handful, bro. Damn. Like, cool. cool. But I was cool with it. I'm like, all right. I said, but, okay, give me something. So he's like, oh, okay. So he goes over, gets yeah, a turkey bag. He's showing it to me. I, I did the same thing. I stuck my hand yeah, in it, took whoop. some. He's like, oh, okay, cool. Okay, so, but that was like, that Touché. was like, yeah. I mean, that was that was like our little interaction and shit, That's you cool, know. Man. Um, that was cool. It was to me. It wasn't bad. It was it was uh, more That's of a cool, compliment. Man. It was yeah, more of a uh, somebody that I looked up to in the game. Somebody, you know. I look up to a lot of people. Like, yeah, there's a, so many great people in this fucking industry, bro. There's a lot of shitheads too, but there sure is. I've I've met some. I've met people that I'm better friends with in this game than I am with people that I grew up with. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you meet some that'll beautiful probably, people in this industry, That'll man. probably be in my yeah. life longer than than a lot of those people ever were. Yeah. Yeah, so, that's a beautiful thing, man. It's good pizza, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, you know what's crazy? You brought this up. I just talked to Sher Sherbinsky last week. We were doing a little bathroom break when Kayla was here from Connected. And uh, somebody hit me on, on the DM like, yo, got to get Sherb on the podcast. I hops on, on the – not the DM, in, in his – in his – comments and i hopped on boom yo sherbinsky at sherbinsky let's get you on the show big dog hit my dm boom hit the dm let's run it i'm like boom. he's he's booked now he's coming on nice he's coming oh, on that's uh, dope next that's month? dope two months two months he's coming definitely a legend in the game oh hell yeah definitely bro is you, a is... yo look you gotta have certain people on the show bro yes. to, to to tell the history correctly yes. like yes i remember when uh you know i'm a weed nerd i really nerd out on this weed history shit because you know it's our it's our industry it's what we do and I always tell people like, yo, look, if you really want to hear the cookie story, and I'm gonna plug, I'm gonna plug the 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 first smoke guys real quick. You you gotta watch Caleb Count's episode, Sherbinsky's episode, Burner's episode, and Straight Flames. Episode. I was gonna say if you're talking about Straight Flames, I was episode. gonna say if you're talking about cookies, you got to talk about Straight Flame. You you listen to those four because because they're, they're they're he's a big part of that story. It's how things you know whatever. Watch the episode, Straight Flame Tone. What's up, Cool Gene? Um, yeah, bro, like you gotta watch those, and you'll 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 have a good idea what happened with the whole cookie story, and then you can watch them on the Good Pizza podcast because yeah. we got the story too. <laughs> but that's where that's where you know what I'm saying I saw it first. Yeah. Well, that's I got to give Tone props where he's where they're due to. He was a big dog, part of man. me being able to make moves in the Bay Area. No shit. Oh, you can carry your product? He was nice. one of the first people to carry my product, nice, and I will, bro. I will, I'll tell him thank you right so now. So you was in Tree Castle on the Tree Castle menu. Yes, sir, I was. Yeah, and, and, and and what made me want to be on the Tree Castle menu was he always had the fire. He always had the he best had fucking straight weed. flame, my yeah, boy. The straight flame. So and he's as solid as they come, bro. Like great dude. Fucking great. Yo, dude. it's crazy. Like I was friends with Tone before I was friends with Tone. Like just through Instagram, I was like, yeah, I fuck with this dude, bro. Like we have so many common parallels and like god damn dog we couldn't we couldn't have had a similar upbringing if we tried jesus christ this is nice yeah bro fugazi man that's nice that's, that's a fucking god damn man. cadre she it. was so good to us great work. cadre man shout out to great cadre. Work. yeah shout bro, out they have not missed a i passed on a lot of shit dude i have not passed on a batch of this ever ever bro it never misses yeah somehow yeah. Somehow, I don't know if it's the plant. They're just awesome. Yeah. At Kajer, great but people. Like, They're great. Dog, people. I've I've passed on every other strain though a couple times. You know what I'm saying? Just to just to nail those batches for the brand. Never fugazi, bro. It's not even a question. It's like, hey, we got this many coming. You coming to get them? Like, fuck. Yep. Sometimes you need a break. Yeah. So much that we had to take it out of production, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm shit. Well, I'm taking that shit out of production for a little while. That's one thing I can definitely say it. that I don't like about Cali. I mean, I love Cali. Don't get me wrong. I yeah. love the weed market here. It's what made everything what it is. Of you course, know, Cali's the, the mecca. mecca. Yeah. Yeah. So, but in California, we're so fucking spoiled. We that we're over a strain before the fucking farmers. It's some coming from somebody who's a farmer. Yeah. That's irritating as fuck. Sucks, dude. When you fucking hunt a seed, everybody loves it. Yeah. They smoke it. You do maybe two runs of it, and then they're like, "Hey, what do you got coming next?" Yeah. I mean. 
that's going to happen until you find those those outliers, those yeah. those sherbs, those gelatos, those yep. you know whatever it is at the time that's coming out the the lemon cherries or the whatever it is those standouts. You're going to find them. That's that's, that's kind of the it. avenue that I'm on now. So I don't want avenue you need to be on. Yeah, I don't want to grow other people's hype strains or anything. Good, not bro. that there's not a place for it, but like me as a farmer. And where I'm at now, everybody wants to see new stuff from me yeah, and new stuff from from most farmers. Um, so I'm just running through gear. I want to try to find that new that new turp, that new the new fucking gelato, the new sherb, the new whatever. Yeah, you know. But I'm taking. Are I'm you trying, breeding? Or are you? Are you? Just I don't breed. Seeds? I'll, I'll never seeds. claim to be a breeder. No if I got seeds, it happened yeah, on an accident. I'm just curious. Bro. It's all good, brother. <laughs> I got accidental it's seeds. I don't got no breeder seeds. Yeah, so me neither. Bro. I leave that. I to pop the seeds like a motherfucker, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, and I've been blessed throughout the years to people just send me seeds to pop because of the way I grow, and I'm so thankful for that. That's cool, man. Like, I, I use BioBiz, I'm soil, and I'm still HPS lights. Um, Hell yeah. So with those things, I, I, I try to – I'm not saying that I do anything better than anybody else because I don't. I just do it differently, and that's what I try to help me stand out in the crowd nowadays because nowadays with these big facilities, I mean, shoot, people are putting out hundreds of packs of, of, of flavors, yeah. you know, and – how do you compete with hundreds of packs even if you grow it better so that's why i'm on the, yeah. the trip that i'm on i want to i want to grow the fire weed but i want it to be the new terps you know yeah we need something new but you know how everybody says i want og i want og but everybody's idea of what og was for them back in the day is completely different than yours because yeah. there were so many ogs and the renaming game is kind of started during og started, yeah bro and the reason why i All say that is OGs. because of exactly what happened to me not too long ago somebody passes you a cut and they say look bro you cannot call it this because i got homies that i've been friends with for like 15 years and i've not let grow this cut and i'm giving it to you so if you call it this i'm gonna have problems with my homies yeah. and shit so please just call it whatever the fuck you want don't just don't call it what it is yeah you know so that's how the rename game kind of really started in yeah. my opinion and that's what happened with og people passed an og cut to somebody and the next thing you know they're like bro don't tell anybody what that is and then they got to call it fucking extreme OG or fucking rocket OG, rocket, rocket OG, fuel, face off. There you Mars, go. They're all kind of tied Jeff together. Fuel. So I'm trying oh, to take man. all of those old school strains and yeah. that are mixed together from breeders cool. to try to find a new OG that everybody can say, oh, that's that one, you know, yeah. because it's got two of the things that you used to call an OG mixed yeah. together that maybe it'll bring out something that's a little bit different from For back sure. in the day. You know, I mean, that's what every every Everything, person popping bro. a seed looking yeah. for, you know. But uh, that's kind of my goal is is I just want to find that some something new, something a new terp's coming out pretty soon. I mean, yeah, everybody's hitting a banger to a banger, you know. Uh, these or, or Z crosses, yeah, Mad Z crosses. It's, oh, bro, I gotta, I banger, gotta. I'm more interested in banger crosses, to be honest with you. Yeah, because uh, there's some cool that candy fumes, bro. Some some people got some dope phenos of candy fumes. So so and I agree. There's some really nice candy. Green Dog's got the one, bro. Yeah. Out of all the ones I've seen, Green Dog's got the one. The number 24. It's either 19 or 24. I think it's 24. 19's from Al. Okay, then the it's 19's from but he but but Green Dog probably yeah. has it because him and Al work together. Yeah, they're so, in the same building. Fuck. Was it the So 19? Green Dog God probably has it. that. Okay. Or or them. or it's something. It's one of them. Yeah. It's the more Z one. So I actually have TK times uh banger right now. A TK. Oh, how's that, dude? Bro, I'm getting ready Are to you chop it. it? It's chopping. It's flushing right now. Chopping it? Nice. Yeah. It's got my eye. Like Really? What are the what are the uh the flower turps like when you It's a sweet a OG. It's like and I I, I really? asked the breeder, where'd this sweet come from? He's like, I, I it's gotta be from the diesel. It's gotta be from the diesel in the um in the uh in the T and not the TK, the uh <laughs> Sure banger? The sure banger, yeah. Yeah, the uh, the headband OG? Yeah. He yeah. said it's got to come from there. Yeah. But I get in color out of it. It's turning purple. Nice. Uh, it's the heads. The heads look like the like a ballpoint. You know, the ball and a ballpoint pen. Mm -hmm. They're that big. It looks like they just sat a oh, bunch wow. of them all over the place. It's uh, pictures nice. don't even do it justice. I put a few pictures on my Instagram, but like they ain't even touching what that stuff looks like. Smell is amazing. Look is amazing. If it translates, we're gonna have game a, over. We're gonna have a winner. Hey, well, you make sure you make your way back down to Sacramento once I'll, everything's shucked and bucked and trimmed and in jars. You feel me? I promise you I'll bring you samples because Please I do. want I want feedback. Yeah, yeah, we got you. We yeah, got you. You're going to get some Hey, look, yeah. in this room, Yeah, <laughs> you're going to get some feedback from this room, bro. Absolutely. <laughs> we're fucking, we're, we're savages with the with the smoke. Yeah, man. That's cool. That's cool. That's exciting, I got bro. that. I got a motor breath 15 times Bacchio. 
times 41. Ooh, nice. I got a Skittles times Georgia pie. I got a Pave times Georgia pie. That Pave. I've had that one. Yeah, Exotics is one. I got it from him. I oh, got yeah. that from Exotics. Oh, that's just but, gas, so bro. So check it out, Sweet though. Sweet gas. I, I effed up, and he he told me, but I didn't take it to heart. So I got cut from him for my room. So that's what I got in there is I got mm -hmm. that, and he gave me four carbon for my head, but I'm just smoking sure. carbon to my head. Sure. Um, but I put that in there, and I didn't know he didn't have a backup of it. Of course, what happens when you don't back up a plant? It's the baddest bitch in the oh, room. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, this plant has it all going right now. The only thing I didn't like about it was structure-wise, there was a large internode spacings. So in between each bud, there was a shit damn near 12 inches. You know what I damn. mean? Until your next bud. I didn't like that part, but they filled in nice chunks. They're like golf balls, right? Yeah, and yeah. bro, they're so yeah. frosty, you can't even see the tree. Yep. Can't yep. see it at all. The smell is amazing. And any if smell I even just amazing. bump it in the room, the whole room reeks. No shit. So I, I might have to re-veg that one. I don't know. It, fuck it. I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm probably gonna try. Yeah. It'll be the first time I ever. He said he don't have it no more. He, well, he has two other phenos. So here's what's up. Okay, he gave I'm about me, to say he might. No, I'm, no he I'm gave me. Heard. He's got like five and six, <laughs> and he gave me like eight or something like okay. that. Okay. And I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, I kind of did. He said something, but you know, when you're doing stuff like that, kind of sure. stuff goes over your head. We're sure. talking about all kinds of shit, and I didn't think about it and didn't back it up. I should. Shoot, I have two plants in the okay, aisle. Veggie, man. I'm gonna. Yeah. I, it, Take a little time, but it'll work. Well, you know, it should work. It's gonna smoke like a, like a champ because there's no backup of it. Of course, bro. It's <laughs> your best run ever. That's how it goes, bro. You know that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's one. That one's looking phenomenal. That's tough. I got I got to thank Exotics for that. Like he 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 set me up with that one, and bro, I'm, he's I'm thankful. Oh yeah. If, if, you know, look, if Nick likes you and he don't like many people, but if he likes you and he fucks with you, he'll he'll lace you up. He'll lace you up. You know what I'm saying. He, I mean, he gives me, he gives me genetics for my other facilities and shit my other breeding or growing partners like he's if he fucks with you he fucks with you man yeah nick's you nick's know? great so it's one of my best friends out here one of one of the you know first um you know what it was it was my first cultivator for good pizza bro he helped me launch good pizza we oh. launched it with carbon bro oh okay yeah that was that was the first thing that everyone in good pizza bag man me and exotics bro yeah like we we it was gonna be all him until like i really figured out the game and like I just like, yo, bro, we just gotta get this and that ready. I'm like, yo, but then I had to tell him, like, yo, bro, I don't think it works like this, man. Like, I have to, I have to, like, let me, you keep doing you. I need to get out there and do me, and we're gonna meet back up and, and go from there. You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what the fuck we did, and it's been working. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's kind of so when I met White Ashes. Oh, yeah, tell me about that, man. How did you guys start working together? Because that's how I knew you. I knew you through White Ash. Oh, yeah. He's, He's yeah. been my guy for a long ass time. I you mean, tell. Uh, we we met. I mean, I can't even remember where we met. I think it was just an IG thing. Yeah, hit me in the DM. No said, doubt. "Hey, I want to carry your shit." And we started. You know, I started working with him. Tight. But that's also when I was still working with Straight Flame. I was working with him. Okay. I was working with Heisenburn. Oh no um, shit! Nice. I was working with a few people. Just dropped. Everybody wanted sherb packs from me. Yeah. So I was just dropping sherb all over the damn place, everywhere I could. Um, and then I wasn't big enough. You know, I just had this little spot. And and uh, I wasn't putting out enough work, and yeah. so uh, I got a trap, and I just basically hit up White Ashes because we were already working, and he I say I hit him up, he hit me up, and he's like, look, bro, I should just I just need all of it, just let me just take all of it and I'll distribute it out. Like, yeah, I need to be the one with the loud, and I'm like, all right. I said I'm too busy anymore anyway, yeah. especially yeah. when I got these traps. I'm a one man show. I'm on my wife trims. I grow. That's it. That's Nobody it. else helps us. No bro. shit. There's, wow. It's a two man. It's a man and woman shop. That's Love it. That. I'm all the garden. She's all the trim. Cool. She'll get a girlfriend or two up once in a while to help. I'll sure. sit down when I'm not doing anything. I'll help. Yeah. But that's not my job. My job's in the garden. Yeah. That's her shit. So she's gonna get that stuff done. She gotta call her girlfriend and that's stuff. That's right. You know? Put them in trim jail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Respectfully, ladies. Yes. Everybody's um, got a job. Play their position. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. So I mean, but because I didn't have the time. That's where I met. That's when I did White yeah. Ashes, and he's like, "Yeah, I'll do that." And I have to give him props, man. He got my work into the right hand. He got at you the lit, right bro. Times. Yeah, he, he did. got you lit. Yeah, big, big, big props. Because yeah. you know what, man? Back then, it was like, I feel like that was like towards the end of the era where like you could lock in with somebody, and it was good, and you were the only one to get the packs, and then you were the guy that distributed it. Like that shit's done, bro. With all these fucking facilities and shit, you could just walk into and get work. Like, yeah. Everybody's just trying to eat, man, and the dollar is so stretched right now because there's so many different brands, grows, whatever the fuck, plugs. Yep. And it's the Insta Trapping era, bro. It's plug hopping city. Like, we play, 
these motherfuckers play plug hopping like it's hopscotch when you were a kid, bro. Like, yep. it's just a game now. Yeah, it's this just guy goofy, just, bro. I I uh, I also have the luxury of working with uh, West Coast Alchemy. That's fire. Yeah, I still never met this guy. I have no idea what he looks like. He's oh. like an enigma. Yeah, he. he, he, he <laughs> so keeps I love it that. that. Way. Yeah, he I love it. that. He should. Yeah. Ne- she should always keep it that way. Yeah, that makes him fucking makes me curious. I've been working with them since they first started. Like I brought oh, him dope, some big dope. clients back in the day, just because I would. I just knew him. Yeah. And I was sitting there, we're smoking a joint at this table, and he's like, "Hey, do you know so and so?" I'm like, "Yeah, I know." Him. He goes, "Man, I want to get their work. Make a phone call, set it up. Got him like three or four good clients. You know, Tight. he's still thankful to this day for those things." But uh, who'd you just, get him? Who'd you get him? Name dropping? You name dropping anybody? <laughs> no, nah, I ain't gonna Keep do that. Oh, no, that's cool. That's cool. No, nah, there was. That's I mean, cool. I, I got him a few guys Shameless in L.A. Plug. I like yeah, it. yeah. I, like it. I mean, there was there, there was some there was. I mean, he probably could have got him himself. You know what I mean? I was just just a helping hand, just trying to yeah, just help him get get in the right place. Also, Nothing like skipping ask, the line. No, nah, people also asking me, hey, you know West Coast? Can you get cool. me in there? You know, cool. um, I just helped any. I I, I want to see people win, bro. I'm not one of those type of guys that is jealous about anybody Good, else. Bro. I want to see everybody win. There's enough room for all of us up in here. Of course, man. There's there's no reason. I think that the problem right now in the game is everybody's too worried about watching the other guy and what he's doing. Yeah. Like just stay in your own. There's there's. I, I'm not bothering you. What I'm doing. I'm not none of. You're not bothering anybody else with what yeah, you're doing. Man. But everybody, the problems come from jealousy. Yeah. From, I should be doing. I should be there. Why does he get to do that and not yeah. me? Don't worry about that shit. There's a just start it. Just yeah. do. It. You want to do it? Fucking do it. Fucking do it. Fucking do and it. And guess what? It's gonna be scary. You're not gonna know how to do it. You're gonna fuck it up. You know what I mean? And that's just part of the journey. And that's and that's what they're jealous and hating on shit that they don't know about, bro. They don't. They see the. You never judge a man. My mentor also taught me this. You never judge a man by their front stage, because you don't know what happens on the backstage. You don't know what he did to get there, mm-hmm. or what he didn't do to get there. You know what I'm saying? Like yep. you don't know that shit, bro. Yep. You 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 wasn't shooting with him in the gym, right? You don't know how many fucking free throws he took mm-hmm. when nobody was there watching him. Mm-hmm. How early he showed up to practice. How late he showed. You know what I mean? All that shit, bro. It. So it, I'd stop fucking hating, man. It's the people that don't have hustle that think there they should go. be somewhere, bro. There you go. They don't have that hustle that we were talking about Hello. at that young age that we all talk about it. Right? It's just like Feel me? <laughs> people that, that are jealous that somebody else is where they are because they don't have that hustle that that person has to even be there. That's a fact, bro. Uh, and, and that's that's what the problem is, is those haters are the ones that can't do it. Yeah. They can, yeah. but they just say, oh, they, they got an excuse. Everybody got, oh, they, they all yeah. got an excuse of why I can't oh, do it. So I mean, I can give you excuses of why I haven't done some of the things in this game that I haven't done, but they are, that's all they are is excuses. If you, you want know, to do it, do it. You know, an, an excuse is a lie so good and so that you believe so much that you've convinced everyone around you, including yourself. That's an excuse, bro. You know, get that shit out of here. Yep. We can make money or we can make excuses. Can't do both. Yep. Real that's facts. That's what it is. And, you know, that's cool you said that, man, because that, that was one of my questions about that. What, what do you think about the state of the cannabis game right now? And, uh, you know, you search, you definitely answered that. Um, and I, I'll give you another question. What do you think, how do you think the cannabis community needs to change for the better? Like, what, 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 do you, what needs to happen out there? Well, I mean, for the consumer, I think what the consumer needs to stop doing, this is, California's over-regulated. We all know that. Yeah. So all those little numbers and shit they make us put on bags, that's all they are is regulation. Yeah. If you want to find something that you like that smokes for you, go by your nose. Go by what's appealing to you in your eye. Don't care about what somebody else. I mean, you can put what somebody else thinks into your into your 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 choice, but do it with your nose and your eyes. Look at that bud. Smell that bud. That's the one that's going to get you high and you're going to enjoy. Not because it has 28% THC and 32 percent cannabinoids or whatever you know it's not it's not none of that shit it's how it when you smoke it what does it do to you you know that's that's i think is what needs to change in people's consumers mind is not worry about the thc not worry about the cbd the cbns or the the, how does it smell how does it smoke and we all know how does it smoke yeah if it smokes good and it smells good it's most likely going to get you high and you're going to enjoy the time yeah you know that's that's what I think needs to be changed. It's just just the thinking of when you go in to a club, you know, get those numbers out of your head. Don't go in there asking for THC. Don't go in there asking for what what gets you the highest. What gets him high might not even get you high, you know. Yeah. Like some people don't even really get too high off of Skittles. Good Skittles gets me lit. Yeah. Like, and I tell homies I smoke Skittles all the time, or I smoke the the Blue Zeus or whatever. They're like, man, that. 
when it's done right, that's some good smoke. Mm -hmm. So just smoke what smells and tastes good to you. And that's 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 what I think needs to change in the industry. That was a great answer, my friend. Oh, thanks. I, I I'd love to play that on my demo table while we're in those clubs doing demos because I hear it all the time. Yo, what gets me the highest? Yo, what's the best THC? Yo, I need a pre roll. I need an infused pre roll. What's the THC percentage? Like, bro, what are you fucking talking about? You don't go to the liquor store and say, yo. <laughs> All right, what gets me the drunkest in here? I'm, I had a bad fucking day. Yeah, you know right? what I mean? Like, what the fuck? No, you go in there and buy what tastes good to you, yeah, what you like to it's drink. Do the job, right? Same you know? thing with weed. What is it? What smells yeah. good to you? What tastes good to you? Yeah, Get man. that for sure. You know, it's what kind of sucks in the in the new in the new market though. You can't really touch and smell know, and look man. at weed like you used to back in the two fifteen days. Yeah. You know, back in two fifteen, you can hand somebody a jar and let them touch it and look at yeah. it and smell it and make their decision that way can't really do that anymore no, and i feel so. sorry for those cons for the consumer that can't I mean, i'm still in the traditional market so i don't yeah. really have to fuck with any of that um yeah. i've had opportunities to go wreck to go legal don't do it i'm not shit's whack i'm not going not until shit's whack not until they force me <laughs> you know when yeah, i have yeah. to i will but yeah. until then i'm staying traditional yeah chill. as bro. long as i can move and and, and do, do what i'm consults doing consults and shit you know you know sell your knowledge yeah you know offer support you don't gotta do that shit yeah. I'm not even, I'm not in this to get rich in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. The money's nice. It's a bonus. But I'm in this because I love this plant. This plant saved my life, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm so that, bro. I'm so wound up tight yeah. that if I'm not smoking, people think I'm on dope or something. You know? Like, I'm just so high strung. <laughs> so an animal. It's just made me more, I can be social. I can be in a conversation. I can. Sure. It's, it's. It's medication for me, bro. Yeah. It, it literally lets me be normal. What I would consume, if whatever normal is nowadays, <laughs> whatever that <laughs> if is, there right? is even a normal, but yeah, lets me not be a standout, you know. So, <clears throat> I got another question for you about some strains I've enjoyed from you, or maybe we could just talk about the strains. So we got a uh, rainbow sherbet, which I believe was runs, right? Yes. And then uh, envy, which was I hold on ice cream cake times. Mochi? Sherb. Sherb. Fucking Sherb. Damn it. I knew it wasn't Mochi. I don't yeah. know why I said that. Um, dope packaging, too, by the way. And that was the first, uh, the, the Rainbow Sherb was the first, like, collab bag you do at White Ash. Remember that? Yep. And, bro, those those packs were so fucking good and smoking, bro. Like, that. that's what, like, reminded me of, like, the Sherb. Like, dude, I got a break. I got a break. Yeah, let's take a break. What's up, guys? Just want to take a quick second to shout out my sponsor, Golden State Labs, a legacy cannabis brand founded in 2012. Craft cannabis made with love, globally enjoyed. You can find Golden State Labs in the States, UK, Scotland, Germany, Spain, Amsterdam, Austria, and Australia. If you see Golden State Labs out there in the wild, you know it's some fire. Grab that ASAP. We'll see y'all back on the show. All right, so Envy, right? So it was Ice Cream Cake Tom Sherb. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that one, bro. That's like the last time I seen you drop a drop a strain that I had anyway. So that was um, something that I bought at one of the shows from Seed Junkie. Okay. Um, it was something that, you know, I was I told myself at that time, well, I'm known for Sherb. I may as well throw a, a Sherb cross into the mix and see what I can do with it. Um, it turned out great. Yeah. Um, but that's, uh, it was... I ran through three different phenos, and that was the one that stood out out of the three that I kept. Okay. Um, and man, just the way that thing smoked, she was a beauty. Um, very, very, it had power for days. Like, when you wanted to get high, you grabbed the Envy. Uh, yeah. My boy from Symbiotics, he told me two times after I gave him some of that, he's like, bro, this is what I want to breed with. This is the kind of weed I want to breed with for tree. No shit. Yeah, he goes, you need to bring me a cut. And of course, I freaking never did. Not not because I didn't want him to have it, yeah. just because it slipped through the cracks and we just never made the time, no you know? Doubt. I'm up on that hill in my little town all by myself, you know, doing my thing. When I get out, it's because White Ashes invites me to something or you invite me to something yeah. or something like that. Um, other than that, man, I'm just in the garden doing my thing. Yeah. You know, no I don't... Uh, I don't, I don't go to, I don't go do too much stuff like that. Sure. So, um, but the, that, that was, that was one of those ones that toasty, 
Uh, you know, Toasty. I know Toasty, yeah. Okay, Toasty, he's he's the one who loved the Envy. He he was yeah. the one that, like, he kept Choice coming. to bite off of. Yeah, right? Shout Toast to Tostada. Yeah. Shout out to Toasty. My fucking compa. <laughs> yeah, yeah he was he was the man on that one. He uh, he really liked that. And um, uh, and then, you know, of course, I always got to thank White Ashes for getting everything in the right hands. You know, got it in your hands. He gets it in people in L.A. He, he gets sure it all over. He fucking does, He gets bro. it all over. United States, bro. Yeah. And I mean, if he if he could, he'd get it across the other way too. You know, yeah. he'd get it to the UK. But right now, the market's not demanding. You know, I don't have enough to get it over there anyway. Even if the market sure. did demand it, you know what I mean. Sure. So, but um, yeah. But that was the the envy was what was probably my last strain that I did, uh, that I brought that I thought was worthy of bringing to the market. You know, I've popped yeah. a lot of seeds since then, but nothing's been worth rerunning. Sure. You know. Sure. Um, and that's that's also where I got to give White Ashes the props. That man. They'll tell you yeah or nay. Well, he makes it work no matter what, though. He'll come mm. at me and he'll say, okay. He, so here's the thing. When he became my my main guy, my my main distributor, nobody else got my shit and he was exclusive, he never turned down my work. Even if it was so we would work on price. No doubt. I wouldn't, but he would still take my work. So I'm grateful for that's that dope. like he would always make sure that we were both eaten that it was fair and that we got you know yeah, we, sure. that it still got out to the market on the right price points you no know doubt. um he would like i said i'm in the garden so i always relied on him for price points and what's going on out there and stuff yeah. like that and he's got his finger uh, on the pulse bro. yeah he's oh, in, for he's sure in it. he's in that shit for sure for know? sure um but now yeah. the way now the way things are i mean just the markets are so much different. I mean, you know what it's like out there. The it's fucking game, jungle, bro. The game's different. <laughs> God damn, buckle up, kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Couldn't imagine getting a game right now. Yeah. Like, you're a little homie. You just got your first pack. Go. Yeah. Good luck, bro. Yeah. What, is, what do you do? <laughs> but That's crazy. That goes back to that thing I was telling you about California. So I ran that Envy for a while. Everybody enjoyed it. Got amazing feedback. Made bags for it. All that. Bags were sick. Oh, thank you. That was all me, me and Joe, pretty much. Me and White Ashes. Yeah, that was that was that was us. We were, we were kind of hand in hand and doing that one. Um, I need to bring that back. You still got it? It's in TC. I okay. got it in TC. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I got a buddy with it. Um, there's another Fino of it out there too that that's running around. Um, okay. That I might get and see if it compares to it. Of course, I don't know. If I'll call it Envy, but it is the same genetics. Um, yeah, but uh, that's okay. That's something I do want to bring back. The reason why is the the high on that. There was nothing yeah. like it. That high was amazing. Yeah, it should slap. Yeah, it slapped for sure. Um, that that's the other place I got to give Joe more credit again. Uh, he he's the one who came up with that rainbow gelato. Like we had runts, we weren't going to call it runts. I'm glad you didn't, bro, because I probably would have passed on it. I, who, everybody was passing on it. I, I put it out as runs one time, and everybody's like, eh. Yeah. And then Joe's like, oh, well, let's just call it Rainbow Gelato. That's what runs is anyway. And I'm like, all good. Let's do that. We did it, and it was a hit. It was a fucking hit. It was, it was a batches. hit. I still got people asking about that shit, bro. Yo, man, that Rainbow Gelato you was getting? I was like, yeah, I know, dude. It's fucking gone. Yeah. It's fucking gone. So yeah. I can tell you, if you got that batch, shout out to you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very yeah. much. And it was like the first batch too. Yeah. That was that first batch you dropped with those bags. That shit was smoking. Oh yeah. Thank you. Probably yeah. the most mouth coating runs I'd ever had to date at that point. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's that's what I'll try to say that I try to do when I'm growing is yeah. I try to grow I grow with soil and organic nutrients. That's yeah. that's what I want to do because I I'm not hating on anybody. There's there's all different ways to grow. We all know that. I'm not a big fan of cube type weed, but I've smoke I smoke it. I'll, yeah. I'll smoke it all all day long if it's done right, you know. But yeah. to me, good tasting weed that coats your mouth like that comes from soil. Um, it's where you get those oils that coat your mouth like that. I'm not saying that it can't be done the other ways because I've had I've had cocoa weed that done that. I've had cube weed Definitely that's done that. Definitely cocoa weed that's done that. Hundred percent. Yeah, all day long. And I've had cube weed that's done it. It yeah. was just done really, really good. Sure. But that's what has to be done for those for those to hit. Um, I feel like I can miss and still have good tasting weed, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's that's kind of how I try to stand out in the market is just for try sure. to uh, just good tasting weed, bro. Yeah. You know, the, 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 good, props out to proper doinks. That's how does it smoke? Yeah. That's a big thing nowadays. Now, everything so. ain't about the white ash. No I mean, doubt. it is to a point. I agree. I haven't had anything that had black ash that was great. No, never. But I have had 
white ash that wasn't very good. Yeah. So that's true. There is there is definitely something behind that. Definitely. So what do you know that the industry should know? Uh, and what what do you call bullshit on out there right now? I kind of already tapped on that a little bit when I was talking about the people going in and fucking getting weed for what it smells like. Okay, we can leave it at that. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of my answer to that. I don't know how you're going to one-up that one. That was a goddamn good speech, my friend. Well, that's kind of how I feel like everybody needs to approach weed. Just do it what is nice to you, bro. Don't, don't, don't... I mean, there's hype. There's there's definitely real hype behind certain things for a reason because it is good. But don't just go by hype. Go by you. Go by what feels good for you. Definitely. That's that's what I would like to tell the industry. Because you're gonna have a better bullshit. experience. Yeah. Period. Like, yeah. And that's what we're all. That's. Tell me, <clears throat> weed isn't mostly an experience. Yeah, it is. It the, is. F- from the rolling to the breaking down to the. I love every part of this. I love every part yeah. of it. I like I like smelling it before I break it down. I like the way it smells when it comes out the grinder. Yeah. I like to see how it squeezes together when you push it in the joint. If it packs or not, or if it's all loose. Yeah. You know, like uh, it, it, if you got to push too hard on a joint to make it stay together. It's probably not gonna get you that high because there's no no real crystal to it, no no real trichome coverage to it. You know, it was, um, that's not always the case though. Yeah, I mean, this right here is one of those ones. It's just you know that it it's not all that sticky, but when you roll yeah. it up, it rolls really nice. It did roll nice. Yeah, yeah, I believe I rolled it in this one. Oh yeah, oh you you'll enjoy it. It's, it's oh yeah, I plan on it, buddy. That's some good smoke. I got my fucking four doinks for the day ready to go. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Yo, you got any um, any weird skills or life hacks you care to share with us? Hmm. Nah, I mean, if my you... old lady says that I'm really good with numbers and math and stuff. Like the way I come up with answers to math questions and shit. You like Rain it, Man with it? Kinda. No shit. Not really. I mean, no, not really. What's but 36 like thirty-six times. Yeah, no, it, ain't, it ain't like that. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> We're about to, we're about but to I, find out. Yeah, no, but I, I, I can come up with an answer, but I just do it in a weird way. Okay. You know, like uh, I just, I just. You can but, do math in your head. Yeah, but not, not like that. But like, yeah, I, I, I can. How about this? <laughs> Thirty-three times forty-two. <laughs> yeah, I can't do. Can that. do it? Okay. No. It turns not, out he's not Rayman, folks. No, no, I'm not Rayman. <laughs> but he's still nice with numbers. Yeah, I can do numbers. We'll take his word for it. Yeah. If you had a weed superpower, what would it be? Shoot. For me, as a as a grower, as a farmer, I would say I want to be able to walk up to any bag of seeds and be able to pick out the seed that is the one. Like, if I have 10,000 seeds in a bag, I want to be able to go, I want this one right here, and I want it to be the one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. hunt needed. Yeah. All I got to do is look at that bag of seeds, and I know which one out of that pheno is going to be the one. That would be my yeah. superpower wasting this damn time save you so much time bro and time so valuable especially when it comes to what you're talking about yeah 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 for sure okay my friend now it's time for your top three strains of all time we're gonna go one old school one new school one desert island you know the drill uh well so for old school for me it's gonna have to be this one that we used to call chicken ranch indica I know you ain't heard of that before. I've not heard of that before. Because that's before weed was even named. That's probably the first named weed that I ever had when I was coming up. Yeah. So that guy I was telling you about, Ron, happened to have a farm that he was growing outdoors, and it was an old turkey ranch. Okay. So the soil was just full of turkey shit. Yeah, yeah. And he planted, like I said, it was either indica or whatever back in the day. No doubt. So he called it turkey ranch indica. So whenever we went over there, we said, hey, man, we need some of that turkey ranch, bro. You, you know, me? so uh, but I would say for the old school one for me would be turkey ranch indica. That okay. shit hit like nothing else, bro. It, it was like an old skunk one. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, just, oh, just a slapper, man. Hey, Sit the fuck down. My mouth's watering right now. Just thinking Damn, about it. Man. Mm. Sounds incredible. Yeah. What we taking to the island, boss? Island. That sherb. Mm-hmm. Probably mm-hmm. that sherb. Not mad at that. Yeah, it was it was a pleasure to smoke. Like it was so good. It was different than other sherbs. Um, that 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 cut came from burner. Oh no shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, burner uh, to um, 
was this old manager's name? Uh, drawing a blank. It's been on the show. The guy who had the runs. Uh, the guy who he had been he been on the show. Dang it! How come I can't Ka- remember? Caleb? No, 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 no. LB never been on the show. Like the Runts boys? Yeah, no, the guy who came out with Runts. How come I'm drawing a complete blank right now? So you got LB, Ray Bama. Ray Bama. Okay, got Ray you. Bama. Got for Ray Bama. Ray Bama used to be in with Burner and all that. So yeah, he, yeah, no he doubt. got it. He gave it to the homies that I got it from. Got you. Um, but it wasn't the cut assured that everybody else was running. It was definitely a different so, so cut. The one? Well, not according to not according to Sherbinsky, but um Everybody that I ever said that ever got mine said that it was different than any Sherb that they had ever gotten from anybody, including Sherbinsky or anybody else. So um, even was a backseat? even Matt from uh, NorCal Gardens, he yeah. said he said the same thing. He goes, bro, this Sherb's different than mine. And and he grew Sherb. Yeah. Uh, who else had Sherb that said that? A um, couple, couple of farmers that had Sherb, they said they go, bro, this is different than mine. So I, 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 I just got lucky. I had the cut maybe but i would definitely be stuffed on an island with that bitch hell yeah (laughs) and something new you fucking with something new i'm fucking with would probably have to be this cut that i got from the russian assassin boys okay what's that that's what we're all calling loud candy right now really yeah i don't think i've had that one that's what I was trying to drop you a sample of not too long ago. A few weeks back, you were kind of busy, though. We kept, it was kind of a last-minute thing, yeah, and I was yeah. running, and you were running. You were with your family having dinner, and I was kind of – I just kind of run through Sacramento, and – No doubt. I was like – you see you, I was a blur see, through here. Yeah. Yeah. So um, – but, yeah, so it's uh, something I'm, – I'm blessed. Like I said, I've been very blessed throughout these years to be able to have really amazing fucking farmers and growers and people in this industry pass me stuff that they just don't pass to other people. Hell, yeah. And – um that was one of them. It's something he'd been working on for like 10 years. He oh, made shit. everything in the cross. So he made a, what is it? Can, can he, yeah, he made a, what he calls jawbreaker. And I'm not a hundred percent sure what the cross in the jawbreaker is, but it's definitely OGs on top of OGs. Yeah. And it's just fucking straight gas, bro. Like yeah. gas, gas, like gas. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like straight out of the fucking gas pump at AM PM gas. Mm. Like, when you're filling your car and the fumes are coming out in the middle of summer, like that. Like, like gas we miss, bro. Exactly. The, you guys are going to see. This one's going to make some noise. So you're telling me you got some gas gas. Some gas gas, bro. All right. And then on top we'll of see, that. Folks. Yeah. On top of that, he had it hit it to what he calls his RSR. And that's Rainbow Sherb times Runts. Okay. So that's where the candy comes in. Ooh, nice. So it's got this really soft candy thing going with the fucking gas on it. Oh, I love it. So this. I don't want to say I got the candy gas, but I got the candy no, gas. No, you got the candy gas. Talk I, I, shit, really, bro. I really do. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. I had few people smoke it and say it was like the one, and it wasn't even done right, bro. Like, I had to pull it early because there was OG in the room, and the OG was done before that, so it wasn't even all the way done. But the way that girl smoked, man, bro. Wait, this one's gonna make some noise. Nice. Um, I'm probably I'm gonna excited. end up having to make a bag for this one or I'm something. Excited to hear it, man. Yeah, thank Hell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah she she throws down heavy, nice buds, great sweet smell. Yeah, that's what I'm fucking with. Well, right don't now. forget your boy. I'm not going to. When it's, when it's chop time. I just got that mom all mommed up. She's going nice. in the next room. I'll, I'll do at least half a. I'll do at least two lights of her. I think. Cool, man. Nice. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Everybody's gonna want. Everybody's gonna want a piece of that. If there was a strain you could bring back, what would it be? Hmm. Bring back. Probably that freaking chicken ranch indica, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes happens. Uh, The old school comes back, bro. I'm telling you, I think that's probably what it would be because there's just never been anything like that. Like, I don't even know what the cross was on that. All I know is it was just still to this day some of the strongest, best smoke I ever had. Yeah, it don't even matter, bro. That back in the day shit. Uh, you just gotta leave it back in the day and just dream about it, you know? Mm. It's like that one chick that fucking <laughs> God damn it, she just got away. <laughs> you might have one night with her, bro. It was yep. just like motherfucker. Yep. Still think about you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. For sure. So let's talk weed etiquette, bro. What grinds your gears, Steve? Could be growing, grinds my weed, gears. smoking, whatever, bro. What's your pet peeve? Well, definitely the same thing everybody says. I hate it when people hit your joint like they're freaking never like going to see like it a... again. Yeah, like they're never seeing it again. Yeah. Uh, no. No, thank you. 
That's um, what we talk about. I only did that because I'm done. Yeah. Where you fucking <laughs> motor mouse. I can't fucking <laughs> stop sucking on the exhaust pipe. You got to uh, relax, Pop. Uh, That's a good one. Um, and it needs to be said more. Don't apologize. <laughs> nah, but I mean, like, in the in the grow, it's still back to what I said, man. Enjoy something for a little bit. It takes us a long time to get it there. Yeah, man. You know, like like to get a strain to actual market. I know this has also been said too, but man, as a, as a, as somebody who's popping seeds, it takes so long to get it there. And if you guys like it, maybe I need to make it go away. Like like we were talking about, like you're doing with the fagazi for a minute, yeah. let it go away Take and bring it, away, it back. Bro. Take you it know? away, man. If they don't um, appreciate it. Yeah, that way they're gonna appreciate it again. Because you always want what you can't have. Yeah, man. That Human needs, nature. That needs to be talked about more, bro. Like just just in the regards of like. You know, the youngsters, right? The youngsters now, it's not their fault. You know, it's just the day and age we live in. They grew up with so much variety, so much access. Yeah. Where we had to, like, break the law to get a sack and then break the law to smoke it, hopefully not get caught, get yeah. fucking locked up, or whatever yeah. the fuck was yeah. going on in your state. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. with that gone, and again, it's not their fault, but it's like, you got to learn to, like, have a little respect, man. Really appreciate your grow. Appreciate where this came from. Yeah. Understand what it took for this to be here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because that, that's 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 probably the thing Fuck, that bugs man. me the most. It's 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 hard. But, I mean, hey, you know, also at the same time, there's a lot of stuff out there, and you don't want to be stuck smoking the same yeah. thing for a bunch yeah, of years no either. Doubt. So, I mean, no I doubt. do get yeah. it, but, like. That's a beautiful thing. That's why I don't want to grow anybody else's hype strains right now. I want to just grow something new so that people won't get tired should, of it as bro. fast, you know, because they, they can't get 100 pounds of it. Yeah. You know, so. But, you know, and it's also up to us, too, as the older homies like we we got to kick that to them and, and let them let them know. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. on us too. Yeah. But I'm just saying. Yeah. I feel that. What's your favorite place to smoke, boss? Favorite place you can to smoke, smoke anywhere where you smoking? I got a pretty nice little smoke session down smoke, smoke spot downstairs in my at my house. Little man cave? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. Dab rig set up, all the glass everywhere. Oh, let's freaking go. roll table, big screen TV, all the weed, all the hash, hash freezer. Sundays are lit at your house. Yeah, yeah. Every day's oh, lit. Every day's lit. <laughs> My man. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. I just want to be like him when I grow up. You feel me? That sounds exactly where I want to be, my friend. Oh, uh, yeah. For real. Yeah. What's your favorite song to blaze to? You're cruising down. Or maybe you cruising, maybe you're not, but it's the end of the work day. You lighting up a fatty. What's in the what's on the tunes, brother? Shoot, I listen to everything. I don't even know if I have a Give song. me a good one, man. Give me a good one. What's something you used to ride around when you, was a, when you were a young man smoked the weed? Like, what was on the tunes, bro? What brings you back? Shoot, when we were driving around smoking when I was young, it was Run DMC, bro. Let's go, It bro. was Run DMC. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's what we were listening to, that That's LL right. Cool J and yeah. all that kind of stuff because yeah. my homie worked at a stereo shop, so he had a stereo in his Tight. car, so we were running around slapping shit in my oh, little yeah. town like everywhere. Oh yeah, um, those obnoxious old systems we used yep, to have, yep. bro. Oh, bro, the license plate rattling. <laughs> yeah. The oh. license plate, yeah, love this it. Shit wasn't lit if your license plate was about to fall off. Yeah, yeah, love it. But it was probably Run DMC and LL Cool J and freaking nice. I dig the, that. NWA. That's right. That whole era, you Logan. know. Yeah, yeah, love it. What's your favorite stoner food, bro? Fucking pizza. Nah, you got that. I mean, at least oh. at the top of the list. Um, I got. I kind of got a sweet tooth. I used to be a fat ass, bro. I used to be like 240 pounds. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. I got a bad diagnosis from a doctor that basically said if I didn't change the way I was living, I was going to probably pass by the time I was 60. Oh, Cause shit. Because I was just fucking sodas, fast food, just eating shit all yeah. day long, yeah. not giving a crap. So. <clears throat> Good for you for getting it back together. You look great, man. Fuck. Oh, I would have never known that. At 55 years old, I'm probably in better shape than I was when I was... Yeah, dude. In my in my late thirties and early thirties mm -hmm. and stuff. That's for darn sure. Good for you, man. So I'm gonna take it a step further. What's your late night? You're a scumbag and you know it. You see that thing on the counter, you're murdering the whole thing. Dude, I'll do weird shit for donuts, man. Oh, donuts. He's a donut guy. I love okay. Donuts. Okay. Uh, and any any like fried bread, bro. Like Oh yeah, that's a that's a good one. Like that's basically a donut, but like any yeah. You can just take some pizza dough, fry it, and roll it in some cinnamon and sugar. I'm fucking oh, that up. Oh, it's amazing. I'm yeah, fucking fried that dough up. so good, bro. Oh, bro. So good. So that's probably my, my bitch right there. <clears throat> if you could... Oh, hold on. Before I ask you this question, have you had... I'm sure you had angel bread or senorita bread? Filipinos make this shit? Mm -hmm. Getting a Filipino bakery? Spanish, I I Spanish bread, they call it? There's uh -huh. the three names I know of. I never had it until I moved out here. Oh, man, you like fried dough. <laughs> 
go holler at one of those, bro. Oh, yeah. Dude, and they're hella cheap, bro. You get a whole box of them for like 15 bucks. Oh, really? 20 bucks, yeah. Okay, I'm down. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. watch it. Oh, I appreciate you know? that. Just get a little six pack and yeah. just keep it moving. Okay. Don't, don't bring the box home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. If you could smoke with two people, one that's dead, one that's still alive, who would they be? They got to smoke, right? They got to smoke, even if they don't smoke in real life. They smoking with your ass. So the one alive, I probably want to smoke with Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time. That's good. Just, just, I dig that. I have, I'd, be, I'd be a good ass time. That was the, yeah, that was the comedian when I was coming up yeah. that we all used to quote and laugh about. And, Raw. Yeah. Raw was the illest one. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that was. Uh, I'd say I wanted for the one alive, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. One that's passed, my grandfather. Solid, bro. I didn't have a. I didn't have a dad growing up. Solid. You know, my dad was pos. Yeah. So uh, he bounced when I was like three. Came back when I was like eleven or twelve, right when a you know, boy needs a dad. Yeah, was a pos. Yeah. So I just basically said, don't don't come get me no more. I'll just kick it here. Uh, so my grandpa was my dad. Cool. He was a, he was a great man. Shout out to him, man. Yeah, shout Rest out to peace. grandpa. He was he was. What was his name, bro? Harry Harry, Harry. Manser. Yeah, he was nice. a, that a great you, man, bro. dude. That yeah, man. I, I, I appreciate that too. That yeah. was the closest person in my life too, my grandfather, man. Yeah, that's why I call him my grandfather because he was my father. He was the man yeah. figure, the male figure in my life, and that's where my hustle came from. Because, like I told you, he came over on a boat, so he had that immigrant mentality yeah. that you're gonna fucking hustle to get something. I bet you there was so so much nonverbal communication between you and him to show you how to be a real man, how to move like a man. Yes. Right. Yes. He didn't have to sit you down and say, "Hey, Steve, this is how you be a man." He didn't do none of that shit. Nah. He just did him. Yep. Yep. Same with my grandfather. Yep. You know. And I think he, he would. Today in these days, he'd probably be proud of what I'm doing. Same here. Like bro. back in the day, <laughs> nah, nah. He they weren't. About, it was a whole different stigma back then. <laughs> yeah. But like today, if he seen where I was at in these yeah. days, I think he'd be proud. Definitely, bro. He he certainly would be. Yeah. My grandfather, he, he was he was cool with it. He was cool with the trees. My mother and my aunt used to grow weed, and he's he had a green thumb. He had the basil and all the the fucking mm -hmm. flowers and the fucking vegetables and the herbs and shit. And he had to move their plants one time, so he the plants were in the way of what he was doing. So he transplanted the plants. <laughs> he's he told him he's like I don't know what you guys had over here, but I moved it over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He fucking successfully. This is planting the dirt, bro. <laughs> he fucking nailed it. Oh man, God bless him, bro. All right. Um. So, at this point, you're gonna shout out your favorite plug from back in the day. Who's your favorite plug from back in the day, bro? Who took care of you, man? Man, I probably you, got two of them. You could hit him. Shout him out, bro. One of them is that guy, Ron. Oh, Ron. Yeah, Ron's, Ron's been I've coming been up a lot. Yeah, shout out to Ron, man. Yeah, Ron. Ron. Ron, Ron you was a bad man. motherfucker, boy. Yeah. We called him Ronnie. We called him Lop. We called him all kinds of stuff. But okay. Good old Lop. That guy right there, man, right. he was he was the man. He always he always made sure. Oh, absolutely. I still talk to him. I June, see him here and there. June sixteenth, get him some. It's National Plug Day. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, just a little joint, a little twenty dollars, you know, I'll a little coffee. That. Yeah. Whatever. Just tell me tell me you're thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate all the good service you gave me back <laughs> in the day. Oh yeah. That's what's up, man. So before we get up out of here, I want you to tell us. If you could go back to the young you the day before you hopped in the game, day before you jumped off the porch, what would you tell you? Take more chances. Don't take more chances. Don't okay. don't be don't be so I mean, I did it for my kids. The reason why I was in that small town. In my small little town, bro, being being in school is hard enough already as a as a kid growing up. I don't want my kids having to be, oh, your dad's that weed guy. Yeah. You know, like having to deal with all that stuff. Because my kids played sports and they were active and all of that kind of stuff. Mean. And yeah. like all of the parents were all straight edge. You know what I mean? Like they drank yeah. their beer and their wine and shit, but they weren't about weed at all. Sure. Um, so I didn't want my kids to have to deal with that stuff. So I just kind of kept it on the DL like that. Um, but. Uh, take more chances. Take that more comes chances. up a lot take, now that take, I've been asking that question. Take way more chances and don't. Yeah. Don't. Uh, and collab. Fucking collab. Yeah. Definitely. That's I turned idea. a lot of them down in the days, and I probably shouldn't have because I'd probably be in a different place right now. Yeah, that's a fact. So if I had that's to give myself fact. advice, take more chances, do collabs. Solid advice, brother. Before we get up out of here, we're going to do some rapid-fire questions. Mm -hmm. These are one-word answers, so try to keep them one word. I'll try. It's hard, but he'll do his best. You ready? Yes, sir. Do you like to smoke in the hot or the cold? Cold. Joints or blunts? Joints. Bongs or bowls? Bongs. Cold start or hot start? Hot. 
rig or e-rig? Rig. Street smarts or book smarts? Street. Fear or respect? Respect. Yes or no? No. Batman or Superman? Batman. Haze or sour? Sour. Nas or Jay-Z? Nas. We'll go a little older for you since you grew up in, a, in the era right before me. We'll go Run DMC or NWA? Oh, damn. NWA. Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat? Street Fighter. What's your favorite Ninja Turtle? Angelo, Michelangelo. 80s or 90s? Shoot. Great. Both. Cool. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Pizza or tacos? Pizza. Pizza with pineapples or no pineapples? No. Tacos or burritos? Tacos. Mozzarella sticks or nachos? Nachos. Beach or snow? Well, I live in the snow, so beach. In and out or five guys? Five guys. Cheetos or Flamin' Hot Cheetos? Neither. The Wire or The Sopranos? Sopranos. For the perfect score. Mm -hmm. Pacino or De Niro? De Niro. Godfather 1, 2, or 3? 1. <coughs> Comedy or horror? Comedy. Freddy or Jason? Freddy. <laughs> Netflix or YouTube? YouTube. <coughs> you a morning person or are you about that vampire life? Nah, I'm morning. Blackjack or poker? Probably blackjack. Text or phone call? Text. Automatic or revolver? Automatic. Breakfast or dinner? Dinner. Bike or skateboard? Bike. Jack or Blue Dream for the rest of your life. Oh, shit. <clears throat> Sorry, pal. You knew it was coming. Blue Dream. If you have one dinosaur as your pet, what would the dinosaur be? T-Rex. Body shot or face shot by Mike Tyson? <laughs> I guess I gotta go with the body. Mayweather or Pacquiao? Mayweather. Shot a 151 or a hot dab? I don't drink, so I'll take the hot dab. Candy or OG gas? OG. Sherbert or Rainbow Sherbert? Oh, Sherbert. Envy or Rainbow Sherbert? Sh Envy. Envy or Sherbert? Uh, Sherbert. <laughs> <laughs> He's sticking to his answers. <laughs> Tupac or Big? Ah, uh, Tupac. Big L or Big Pun? Mm. That was super East Coast, kind of underground. If you don't know, it's cool. Just not super familiar with him. <clears throat> no, it's good. It's good. I, I realized when I said that, I was like, ah, oh, you might have missed yeah. that one. Wu-Tang or Death Row? Death Row. My man. Good shit, brother. Well, yo, I had a great time getting to know you on the episode, man. That was that was fun. Thank um, you. Before we get up out of here, um, is there any, oh, we have to share with the people how we met. And uh, who do you know that I should know that I should get on the show? So uh, we met at Hashow Island. Bro. Hashow Island is where yeah. we met. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. seen you out there setting up when I was getting ready to set up with White Ashes yep. and just happened to walk up and seen your mug uh, and said, yo, is. what's good? There he fucking is. Didn't know that was you. What's up, dog? Yeah. Hell yeah. That's why I'm showing my face because that's what a lot of people be like. Yeah. Oh, you're loud THC organic. I was like, holy shit. I wasn't shit. expecting some old man. <laughs> yeah, dude. And I, I mean, I wasn't. I didn't yeah. know you. You know, yeah. I didn't know you were a little older. It's all True good. True definition of OG. I'm yeah, an old bro. guy. Yeah, man. Respect, man. <clears throat> um, and, and who do you know that I should know to get on the show? Who would be a good guest, you think? Man, the Russian assassin boy's got a lot mm. to say. I just don't know if he'll come on here, but man, that guy. I've been knowing about them for some years, bro. I ask him if they're open, bro, and then make the connection. He's doing some fucking cool shit right now, bro. Yeah. He just built himself a brand new facility. Nice. It's going to be so dope. Tissue cultures, everything. Like, yeah, you need to get him on here. He's got a lot to talk about. He's I'll been in the him, game bro. forever. Yeah, yeah, bro. I've known about him for many years. Yeah. Never met him, though, but I've known about him. 
Cool, man. So how can we help you, bro? What, 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 what would you like to plug before we get up out of here? You know what I'm saying? Drop your Instagram. Yeah, just, I mean, at Loud THC Organics on IG. And, man, when you see my product, try it. I appreciate it. I love this. I appreciate the support. I mean, I couldn't do this without all the support. So when you see my stuff, please try it. Hell yeah. Bro. You won't be sorry. It's all smokes good. That's right. Sherbert for life. Yeah. <laughs> all right, brother. Thanks right. for coming through and sharing your story with us, my bro. Yeah, for real, means a lot, man. Yep. You already know, bro. So, yeah, man, hit up my boy, Loud THC. Hit him up at Loud THC Organics. Hit the Patreon. Let's keep this show on the road, man. Thank you so much for my Patreons and all my supporters, man. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. We'll see y'all next time, man. Peace, Peace. love, good pizza. We up out of here.